place that I've never been, and I'm my plan is to take Lori and the kids soon. We're going out to Hawaii with Ken. Ken, thank you, my man. You're on CBS Sports Radio. All right. Thanks, Mr. Bill. The following is a special sports broadcast presentation of Talk Radio WRNR Martinsburg. Play ball! It's time for the fun and excitement of West Virginia high school baseball. Today's game is being brought to you by Miller Honda, Cox Holiday Professional CPAs, Brown Funeral Homes, Miller's Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, The Marius Group and Ameriprise Financial, WVU Medicine Berkeley and Jefferson Medical Centers, Parsons Ford, Bechtel Jewelers, WH Miller Systems, D&N Auto, The Mortgage Center, The Hagerstown Sons, Hosses Steak and C, Bears Repair, The Final Score, and Atlantic Security. And now for the pregame show. Let's go out to the field and join our talk radio WRNR broadcast team. Ben. And good evening across the eastern panhandle or wherever you may be tuning in tonight. It's high school baseball, the Mingo Bay Classic from outside Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, actually. Our location right now is Loris High School in Loris, South Carolina, just a few miles south of the North Carolina border. So we're about 40 minutes outside of Myrtle Beach, and it's the host, Loris, as they welcome the Spring Mills Cardinals to town in day two of the Mingo Bay Classic. Matt Crawford here with you for the play-by-play. -play. Gary Geffert going to be filling in the blanks here for color commentary for this game. And Matt Miller, a pure cameraman tonight, uh, from where the camera is, not going to be able to make him a part of the broadcast tonight, but he will be back with the play-by-play -play action tomorrow morning when we have Martinsburg back in action for the third morning in a row. We'll be back at Carolina Forest tomorrow morning. First pitch for that one, or pregame for that one, will be 10.05, right around 10.15 to 10.20 for the first pitch, as long as everything goes accordingly. Well, Gary, an interesting matchup here tonight. Spring Mills comes in, the only team yesterday out of the Eastern Panhandle to get a win. They got a 13-3 win against Hastings. So they're coming in after a win, the only team in the Eastern Panhandle that's down here that can say that. Yeah, they are, and they're facing what uh, appears to be a what Coach thinks is a pretty good Loris team here. They're, they come in at uh, 10 and 9. They lost last night to the Penfield team that we were watching here that just beat Princeton on a mercy rule game. Uh, and Penfield started out, they had, their first three games were just blowouts. They, uh, they were scoring like 20 and uh, 11 to 1, 13 to 2, 11 to 1. And since then, have slowed down a little bit. Probably early games against uh, not as good a competition. Uh, but the coach says they're playing pretty well, and he expects them to do well tonight. And Loris, 3-2 and two in their last five games. Uh, yesterday against Penfield, an 8-7 win. But an interesting uh, fact from that game, they gave up eight runs. Uh, but on the mound, it was Loris doing what they needed to do, striking out 15, uh, but just somehow uh, Penfield able to score and scrape out eight runs uh, for the 8-7 victory. Well, the Penfield team we were watching out here, they're very, they put the bat, we saw them put the bat on the ball here. I think it, pitching was a different, probably a different quality against Flores, but they're very aggressive on the bases. Uh, ran real hard, ran double steals, took the extra base, uh, and looked like a pretty good defensive team, too. Here's the sun is beginning to go down behind us. The field still, for the most part, has sun on it, at least right in front of home plate. The shadow starting to go into foul territory towards the backstop, but by first pitch, the shadow is probably going to uh, start wreaking a little bit of havoc on the infield, and probably about the third inning is when the lights will take effect here at Loris. Spring Mills comes in 12-9 and on the season, and uh, a team that had a solid start to the season, I think, I don't want to say surprising people, but playing a little bit above what a lot of people may have expected the Cardinals to do early in the season, but the last week and a half to two weeks back in the Eastern Panhandle, uh, really playing up and down baseball. Yeah, they won their first five games, and since then they've been seven and nine. They were six and nine till till they came in and won last night. Uh, but you look at their lineup, and they they've got some guys that get on base. They got some guys that put the bat on them. It's a team they're hitting three thirty. Uh, they run the bases a little bit. They take the base on balls, and they got some pitchers that uh, 
throw strikes and, and uh, keep them in ball games. And you look at this Spring Mills team, you mentioned the lineup that's hitting the ball very well and high on base percentage as well. Uh, Tyler Gilpin hitting 437, uh, looking at Aiden Schenzel hitting 419. So two guys batting above 400 at this point in the season. So you can't complain too much when you're uh, this deep into your season, have two guys hitting over uh, 400. And Tyler Moreland at 386, so right near that 400 mark. And Evan Hurt hitting 391. So you have four guys that are hitting 386 or above. That's not bad for almost half your lineup at this point of the season. Oh, that's pretty good. And if you was looking at the box score from yesterday's game when they won that game, it was the top half of the lineup that produced uh, multiple hits, I think, out of everybody in the first four or five slots of the game uh, that, that that got their runs and, and got them to victory yesterday. The bottom half of the order, not so much. Yeah, not so much. And, again, it's high school baseball. You, you, you're going to win a state championship if you're going to be batting extremely good one through nine. A lot of times at the high school level, you're going to have uh, those eight, nine guys or in the seven, eight. Some uh, coaches like to put a guy that's hitting very well in that bottom spot. And right now, uh, Riley uh, Horderby is hitting very well at 313 in that bottom spot. But you look at uh, uh, Braden McDaniel, only one for eight, coming into the season batting 125. He's batting in the number eight spot. So uh, other than that, you're really looking at a very, very solid lineup for this Spring Mill Cardinal team. Yeah, and even yesterday, they, of course, they banged out 15 hits against Hastings yesterday. Multiple hits by actually the first one, two, three, four, five, six players. Next three guys each had a hit, and it was only the bottom two guys who uh, didn't have hits, yet each of them got on base and each scored. So, this good is our balance. This is our second game today. The first game was this morning, and it was Martinsburg taking on West Hill down at Carolina Forest. Martinsburg escaped with a 7 5 win, I think is the best way to put that. Pitching in the middle good innings and offense from really about the third inning on struggled to produce, and they did just enough to get a win against West Hill, a team that was only playing their third game of the season. Well, I think two things happen. One is something that happens very often, especially with high school age teams. They get out real early. It looks like it's going to be a blowout, and they let out. Martinsburg seemed much more aggressive in the first couple of innings uh, as a team, and it just seemed they lacked a little of that aggressiveness. And the second thing that happened is got to give uh, some credit to King, the pitcher uh, for the New York team, who finally started finding his curveball and got a lot. The first couple innings, just a little bit of break on it, but uh, from the third inning on, he had good movement down on the curveball and threw strikes and uh, kept Martinsburg in, in check. Gave him a chance to try and come back. The only game left to play for the five Eastern Panhandle teams that are down here in Myrtle Beach is the game that we have coming up in just about 10 to 15 minutes. It was Hedgesville falling again to River Bluff. That was a 8-1 final. So Hedgesville has struggled uh, since coming down here to Myrtle Beach. Which surprises me. Yes. I, they, they've got, well, they've got Chase DeLauder, uh, who's just hitting out of this world. Yeah, the reigning state player of the year and making an argument for it again this year. Real good argument for it. But they've got other really good hitters. Hunter Coe. Uh, Brady Weaver Brady, hitting the ball very Brady, well this Brady year. Brady Weaver. A couple of guys who can. Weaver pitches well. DeLauder pitches well. And that, that kind of surprising that they're not, not doing a little better down here. It was Jefferson having a good bounce back game today against Lakewood. They got the 15-5 win over at Sockestee at 1.30 this afternoon. They needed that after the game they had last night falling to the host Sockestee game you heard and saw right here on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10 last night. That was a 7-3 game, but getting the 15-5 win against Lakewood today, it's a, it's a win they needed. It, it is the one they needed because they just had a terrible first inning yesterday. That was was not a Jefferson team first inning. I, I, I don't think I've seen a game like that watching Jefferson play uh, before, but not throwing strikes and then a couple errors and one of them on a really routine ground ball. And that was really the game was that first inning. The that five was. runs in the first inning really summed up that entire game for the Cougars. Yeah. And then Washington uh, still falling on some hard times, still looking for their first win of the season. It was a 17-0 shutout at the hand of Worcester today at Conway. That was a game that it took place at 1.30 this afternoon. So Washington, a senior-heavy team last year. Again, 12 or 13 of the 15 players on the roster last year were seniors. They were playing better baseball right before coming down to 
of the Mingo Bay Classic, but have kind of fallen on hard times again and are playing baseball over the la playing bad baseball over the last two days. It's been an 18-2 loss and a 17-0 loss. So uh, they're giving up a whole lot of runs and not scoring an awful lot either. Now that's the thing about high school baseball. You can't go out and sign Manny Machado and Bryce Harper. You're sort of stuck with who's in, in your area and moves through. And, and they did have that nice run of talent there that a uh, couple of years that uh, really good baseball. And now they're hitting a little bit of dry spell, and they've got to wait for people to come up through the system and, and uh, work with the players they got to make them into better players. Again, the game we have here tonight will be Spring Mills taking on Loris. Loris, the host, one of the ten hosts down here at the Mingo Bay Classic. We will hear from Spring Mills head coach Justin Combs coming up in our next segment of the pregame show, brought to you by W. Harley Miller Systems, providing custom integration services for home and office automation, home theater networking, audio, video distribution, and more. Call 304-350-1931 or go to whmsystems.com. We will hear from head coach Combs coming up next in the pregame show. This is West Virginia High School Baseball on Talk Radio, WRNR, and TV 10. When you're hurting... We're here. When things are confusing, we're here. When you need answers, we're here. Brown Funeral Home. We've been caring for families like yours for generations, since 1880. Whether you want to plan ahead or you need us now, our families are precious to us, and so are yours. Brown Funeral Home. In Martinsburg, Inwood, and Charlestown, Ranson, we're here when you need us. If you hang the WV Medicine sign, it certainly has helped take us to another level. He literally, literally saved my life. It's just mind-boggling to me that he was able to do what he did. We're able to affect much more of a difference for our patients with these resources. Having people treated locally uh, enhances their overall care. They treat you great and they're down to earth in the West Virginia way that all West Virginians treat each other. Welcome back into the pregame show, the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. It's Spring Mills taking on Loris. Loris, the host, host school this evening. First pitch coming up in about 10 minutes. Our umpires coming back on the field. Getting get ready to talk to both coaches, then we should be pretty close to getting starting lineups and getting first pitch underway on what is proving to be a little bit of a chilly evening down here at the beach. We caught up with Spring Mills head coach Justin Combs a little bit earlier, and here's what he had to say. Just got the conversation started with how his team is playing uh, coming into tonight's game. We, we had a real good win yesterday offensively. Uh, we pounded out 15 hits, um, and Evan Stanball did what he always does and uh, gave us a chance to win through a complete game. So our spirits are pretty high right now. It's good weather down here. So we're hoping this uh, kind of keep it rolling this week. Is it nice having that nice weather with the winter and beginning of spring we had in the Eastern Panhandle? Yeah, it's, it is always great coming down here. We kind of had a late, late, uh, you know, late trip down here this year just because of the way Easter fell. But uh, it is nice to come down here and get to the nice weather. Weather. Obviously, being in Myrtle Beach, there's going to be some sort of distraction when it comes to the beach and everything. You guys playing about a half hour outside of Myrtle Beach here in Laura. So you think that bus ride kind of helps you all a focus more than some of the other teams may have that issue with? Yeah, um, I think we got a pretty smart group as far as, you know, when to uh, kind of turn it on as far as uh, getting into a baseball mindset as opposed to the uh, the beach vacation mindset. Um, so I think that little drive does kind of help them get their focus and, you know, get ready to play a game. When you look at the timing of this year's Mingo Bay Classic, a lot later than it was last year, and when you all get back, only about two weeks left before sectional, uh, do you like that timing or would you rather be uh, playing regional and sectional opponents back home at this time of year? Um, I don't think it really matters too much as, as far as that goes. Uh, we just want to be playing our best baseball going into the tournament. So um, hopefully this week kind of helps us do that. Uh, and, you know, as we head into sectional play, because, uh, we, you know, we've got a real hard region to get through, uh, and we'll have to be playing our best baseball if we have a shot. Talk to us about who you're throwing tonight. Uh, we're throwing Corey Hammond. Um, he's been real consistent. Uh, he fills it up with strikes. He's not going to strike a lot of people out, but he pitches to contact, um, and he always gives us a chance when he goes out. So I'm sure he'll now have another quality start tonight and gives us a chance to win. How much do you know about this Loris Lions team you're playing? I, I looked them up on Max Preps. I think they're eight and eight, um, but they. I was just talking to a couple of their guys. that said they played some, you know, some good teams in the region, and they're they're thinking they're going to come out of the region. So I'm sure it'll be a good ball game. Obviously, we're playing on their home field, so that'll be a challenge for us. Uh, but hopefully, we can rise above that. Well, coach, good luck tonight, and thanks for the time. Thanks, Matt. 
Spring Mills head coach Justin Combs on the matchup coming up tonight. And again, I think it, when it comes to high school kids, they have a little bit of an advantage with the bus ride they have. Obviously, uh, I talked to him. They're staying in Myrtle Beach along with the rest of the Eastern Panhandle. Uh, but you look at some of the teams and how they've come out and played. You got to think being at the beach and ha- being a little more relaxed and is got to be not necessarily the point in the season you want to be having guys at the beach hanging out not necessarily 100 percent focused on baseball and I think uh, we had the long trip today coming out here I think that allows Spring Mills to really set their head clear their head and focus on baseball well that's a good point I remember when I was coming down here with my son who was playing high school baseball and there was a lot of free time and uh, after the, the second year he came down was a second year for the coach too he structured some baseball activities during part of the day when when they weren't playing for exactly that purpose because otherwise they're down at the beach there's a strip they can go down up and down and and uh, lots of places to go arcades and stuff like that and kids love it but don't have their baseball heads on and so it's it's a challenge for the high school coaches to do that and i think justin's got a good idea here Tim Graham, the head coach for Loris, and Justin Combs meeting at home plate with our two umpires. So the starting lineups will be coming up next, so we got to get in our next break. And we will give you those starting lineups on the back side of this break. Again, at Spring Mills taking on Loris coming up next. Welcome to La Bella Vita, named for my grandma Vita. Our mountaintop getaway honors her legacy while complementing the home's spectacular views. This recently renovated property boasts a breathtaking landscape of Deep Creek Lake while providing great open interior spaces for a sensational vacation. You'll immediately notice the great room allows for entertaining, dining, and relaxing after long days on the lake or skiing on the slopes of Wisp. Your family and friends will enjoy relaxing in all the open spaces. The home features six bedrooms, including four that are private suites. And each of the four levels of this home feature amazing visibility, as far as the eye can see. Like our family, we hope you enjoy making memories here on the mountain. We love sharing the spacious, warm, and inviting home that overlooks the lake. Cheers to the beautiful life, La Bella Vita. Here at Loris High School, again, a relatively chilly night, more of an eastern panhandle feel to it than uh, being down at the beach as it was a, a nice day earlier in the day, but now the sun's gone down, the wind picking up a little bit, still not overly windy, but a little bit of a chill in the air, a spring chill in the air as we will look at our first inning, first pitch forecast coming up right after first pitch, but it will be interesting to see how uh, this Loris team uh, handles that. Usually not overly cold down here. Spring Mills used to this. This is probably warm to them uh, coming from the eastern panhandle. Again, the pregame show brought to you by W. Harley Miller Systems, providing custom integration services for home and office automation, home theater networking, audio, video distribution, and more. Call 304-350-1931. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for today's game, brought to you by DNN Auto Specialists, where honesty is their best policy. Get it fixed right the first time at DNN Auto, a family-owned and operated Auto specialist mechanic shop since 1974, specializing in exhaust, alignment, and tires. Call 304-267-4078 to set up an appointment. Let's start with the visiting Spring Mills Cardinals, who again come in at 12-9. and nine. Uh, Skipper Justin Combs uh, leading off for Spring Mills will be Bryce Farrow. He is playing center field today. Corey Hammond in the number two spot will be on the mound for the Cardinals, playing second base. And hitting number three will be Tyler Gilpin. Uh, Playing shortstop is the cleanup hitter, Tyler Moreland. Uh, DHing is Evan Hurt. He is DHing for right right fielder Connor Gotthold. Again, Evan Hurt DHing in the number five spot. Aiden Moss will do the catching today, batting sixth. Aiden Schenzel batting seventh. He will play left field today, playing first base and batting eighth will be Braden McDaniel. And then rounding it out is Riley Hardaby. He will play third base today. So again, it's Farrow, Hammond, Gilpin, Moreland, then Hurt, Moss, Schenzel, McDaniel, and Hardaby. For the Loris Lions, playing center field, getting it started will be Gage Smith. He wears number 11. The number two hitter will be Carson Granger. He plays third base today. Batting third will be Tanner Kennedy. He's playing left today. DHing will be Tucker Reeves. He is DHing for Reagan Granger. 
Shortstop batting fifth will be Cole Stewart. Behind the plate will be Jacob Black batting sixth. Andrew Bufkin will be batting seventh. He's playing second base today. And in right field will be Connor Roth in the number eight spot. And rounding it out, Caleb Jordan. He will be the starting pitcher today for the Lions. It'll be Spring Mills down the first baseline in the away dugout there in the red jersey tops with the a white flare down the side and the white numbers, the gray baseball pants. Uh, for Loris, they will be on the in the home dugout with this being their home field. On the third base side, they are in the gray baseball pants, the black jerseys with the looks like light yellow band around the neck and the sleeves of those jerseys, the blue numbers on the back with the gold trim, the black baseball hat, and the LHS logo in white on the front of those black hats, and it looks like a lion in the nameplate on the back of those jerseys. Loris is going to uh, come out and go into their defensive positions as the opening lineups are, or the starting lineups are being introduced uh, from our public address announcer here. All the reserves now going out onto the field, going up that third base line. All right, we will pause here for the National Anthem, take our last break, and then come back for the first pitch here from Loris. It's Spring Mills taking on Loris. It's high school baseball on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Life can get in the way these days. We all know that. Work commitments, social commitments, volunteer commitments, family commitments. You put your heart into all of it. You've got enough to worry about already. Your roof shouldn't be one of those things. Everything should just work. But when your roof is in need of an upgrade, you shouldn't have to worry about that either. Modern Renovations, your four-state roofing solution. Reminding you that home is where the heart really is. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Ron Hawker here. You have no idea what Johnny's goes through to bring you the best seafood around. We have snow crab clusters, shrimp, crab meat, fish, all the best seafood you want at Johnny's. It's a tough job out here, but our customers are worth it. Johnny's with two great locations, 1456 Winchester Avenue, Marchburg, and Route 11 South in Chambersburg. Welcome back into Loris High School, home of the Lions. The Lions, the one of ten host fields here at the Mingo Bay Classic, and one of the host teams. They will play the Spring Mills Cardinals tonight out of Spring Mills, West Virginia, up in the Eastern Panhandle. One of the five EPAC schools coming down to Mingo Bay this year. The lone team that decided to uh, stick around home, or at least stick around the Mountain State, not necessarily, not necessarily home, was the Musselman Appleman. Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, they're taking on a Brighton, New York, and a South Charleston down at a South Charleston. And then they'll play Berkeley Springs Thursday. Friday, Allegheny and Mountain Ridge will be a road trip for them. And then Saturday, they're at, looks like, Greenberg Antietam. So that is what Musselman is doing this week as the warm-up pitches for Caleb Jordan are underway. Dimensions here at Lion Field, 310 to left field, 350 to straightaway center, and 315 down that right field line. As the wind blowing in, when it blows from uh, right field or a little bit behind us, so a little bit of a swirling wind. When it's blowing, again, right now, the flag pretty much calm as we look over to the press box, but we've seen the wind uh, pick up throughout the day today. Off and on, off and on. And that's what you get when you're down at the beach. You get those winds coming off the ocean. But again, Loris, about a half hour away from actually being in the Grand Strand region of Myrtle Beach. Again, Spring Mills will be the 
visitors today. So they will bat first. Loris will bat in the bottom of the first inning. You know, the biggest wind change was yesterday between the day game and the night game because the day game you had all sorts of wind and at night it was calm. So the start of the day game we saw lots of fly balls dancing in the air like knuckleballs and uh, night didn't have that. Again, leading off for Spring Mills be Bryce Farrow. He comes in batting uh, 308 on the season. Has drove in 20 out of that leadoff spot, which is pretty impressive. That means the rest of your lineup is usually getting on base when the leadoff batter can drive in runs like that. He has an on-base percentage that is 429. And, Gary, you were looking at some of the stats, and that on-base percentage, pretty interesting. Well, it is because what it doesn't count, and I, this just blew me away. He's had 85 plate appearances. 14 times he's reached base on an error, which means he's busting it down. And I asked Coach Coombs about it. He says he's not he's one of the faster players, but not the fastest. It's just he runs real hard on everything and forces the action and makes them make plays, and they haven't 14 times. Here's the opening pitch. First pitch high and inside for ball one to Bryce Ferrer. Our first pitch being thrown at 654 here at Loris High School. As here comes that 1-0, and Farrow takes it inside for ball two. Today's opening pitch brought to you by the Mortgage Center on Edward Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg, where Mark and Cheryl Savitt treat you like family with personal one-on-one -on -one service. We're walking with, working with from application to settlement, plus low interest rates, closing costs. To phone them, go to 304-267-9040 or online at mortgagefinancing.com. And Caleb Jordan just low-bridged young Mr. Farrow. So Farrow heading the count now 3-0. Here's that 3-0 delivery right down the middle for strike one. So Farrow taking the entire way there. Farrow walks a lot, too. He's got 15 walks on the year. So 3-1 now the count to Farrow. Here's a breaking pitch that misses high. Farrow ducks and will now jog down to first base to reach first base for the leadoff walk here in the top of the first inning. So, again, a 429 on base percentage. That'll go up a little bit. After that leadoff walk, he'll bring to the plate Corey Hammond, today's starting pitcher. Spring Mills likes to run a little bit. They've got 26 stolen bases in their first 21 games, uh, but thrown out seven times. Farrow's got seven of those stolen bases. Interesting to see what he does here. Hammond comes in a 217 hitter as Farrow stands on first. Now gets a minimal lead, nothing major. He first pitched to Hammond in for strike one on the inside corner. I'm sure Coach Graham is good to see that after the last at bat. Trying to effort our first inning first pitch forecast, but uh, not a whole lot of cell service down here, or up here, I should say, in Loris. Here's that 0-1 fouled off on the third baseline as head coach Justin Combs goes down to get it. Good effort by the skipper. So now Caleb Jordan ahead in the count 0-2 to his opposition today, Corey Hammond. And Hammond is strikeout prone. He strikes out 18 times in his 75 plate appearances. Check back over to first. Farrow back in safe on the dive. So Jordan just checked on Bryce Farrow, who can make things happen on the base paths. Not necessarily all the time a threat to steal second, but definitely has that speed. Here's the 0-2 to Hammond. High and inside for ball one. Hammond backing out of the way of that one is... It was coming and when head high. When Jordan's missing, he's missing by a bunch. And it's either been right down the heart of the plate or it's missing way inside is something we saw in that game earlier uh, featuring Princeton. Was the pitchers have been pretty sporadic off that mound. Here is oh. the one two, and they'll ring him up with a strike on the outside corner. So Corey Hammond goes down looking on a breaking ball that uh, started on the inside part of the plate, then had some late movement on it. And Hammond sits down on strikes. That is a Second nice pitch. A very nice pitch. It's hard to do anything with. Yeah, it, it froze Hammond. He wasn't. He was not looking for a breaking ball on that pitch. 63 degrees is our first inning forecast. Is Farrow off to second base with a great jump, and he will be in safely. Throw down from a Jacob Black was a good throw, but Farrow just got a phenomenal jump as he is into second base with a stolen base. The yeah, throw was a little bit high, but. The, the ball got there after Farrell was sliding over the base. Tyler Gilpin at the plate. The first pitch to him before the throw was a ball. So the count to Gilpin now 1-0 as he fouls the 1-0 off 
to the right of us into the screen behind home plate. The count now even at 1-1. Uh, Gilpin has leads the team with 31 hits, and he's got 25 RBI and leads the team in RBI too. And a 437 batting average and a 468 on base percentage. Here he's comes the what they had on the scoreboard is an 0-2. Thought I, I we had it as a 1-1. Now the count will call that a 1-2 count now to Tyler Gilpin. Fair standing on second. Here comes that one, two as Gilpin lifts into center field. It will hang in center field. Running it down is going to be Gage Smith. Four out, number two. A routine fly ball. Just got a little too much air underneath it, did Gilpin. Kind of had a uppercut at it and lifted it into center field. Again, a routine play by Gage Smith in center field. Two down here in the top of inning, number one. Brings Tyler Moreland, the cleanup hitter, up to the plate. Moreland coming in a 386 hitter but getting on base at a rate of 450. He's also driven in 17. Bryce Farrow could be number 18, as with two outs, he will be moving with a hit. So would most likely score a run on anything hit into the outfield. Here's the first pitch to Moreland inside for ball one. Uh, shortstop wanted to throw on the pickoff. Pitcher didn't hear it. He see it. He, uh, shortstop was stuck in uh, behind Farrow. But he got lucky because it ground ball to the shortstop would have been through. Had no chance of getting back. Now stepping and turning back to second is Caleb Jordan. No throw. Farrow quickly gets back to second base. That's now Tyler Moran will step back in awaiting that 1-0 pitch. Here comes that pitch to 1-0. Moreland smacks one down the left field line. If it's fair, it's going to score a run. It does stay fair. Farrow's going to come around easily. Tyler Moreland is going to cruise into second with a stand-up double. And a two-out RBI double for Tyler Moreland puts Spring Mills on the board first. They hold the one nothing lead over Loris. And Moreland smacked that ball. It went right down the line, was just inside the line, and then bounced to, into foul territory. There's a, there's a fair amount. It looks like there's about 20 feet of foul territory in the outfield on each, each side here. And narrows a little bit as it gets towards those foul poles, but a great hit turning on that one was Moreland. That now brings up Evan Hurd, who takes a strike one, low and away. Nothing he can do with that pitch, so a good take by Evan Hurd, who comes in a 391 hitter and getting on base at a rate of 474. And he's got eight doubles so far. Here comes that 0-1 outside for ball one. Cat now knotted up at 1-1. One and one. Spring Mills has not hit a hit a homer so far this year, but they get extra. They got extra base knots, 39 doubles and 11 triples as a team. The 1-1, one, one, a breaking ball in for strike two that ended up right over the heart of the plate, started inside on Evan Hurt as he was looked like he was taken the whole way. He's now behind on the count, 1-2. And he's got the whole right side of the infield. The second baseman is holding. He's on top of second base. Now he'll break back. The 1-2, high and a bit outside to Evan Hurt. The count now, two balls, two strikes. The but, but third baseman, uh, Carson a Granger looks like he's playing inside the bag a little bit. Not sure if he was expecting a bunt or just playing a little, little in. As the first baseman looks like he's playing a little in as well. Here's the 2-2 fouled off. Staying alive will be Evan Hurt. Yeah, he's, I'm not sure why he's playing up so close. The play here is going to be at first base. And even the first baseman looks like uh, Reagan Granger. Looks like he's playing just about even with that first base bag, something you usually don't see with two outs. He's trying to knock down that ball in the infield. and uh, Carson Granger. Guessing there's some relation there, playing inside the bag at third base. Here comes that 2-2 low and away. It gets by the catcher, Jacob Blacks, moving to third base. It will be Tyler Moreland. It's now a run just 90 feet away. Could be the second run of this top of the first. The count now full at three balls and two strikes. And that was a wild pitch. That was Catcher Black had no shot at that. So a wild pitch moving Tyler Moreland to third base. And a full count to Evan Hurt. Here comes the payoff pitch, a breaking ball, fouled off and not able to hold on to it as Jacob Black was in his glove, what looked like for a moment, but just couldn't squeeze it to get the out. So staying alive as Evan Hurt, the count remains three balls, two strikes here in the top of inning number one. It's Spring Mills with the one nothing lead after the two-out RBI double from Tyler Moreland, who's now at third base. Again, the payoff pitch, and this one a flare to the first baseman. Reagan Granger, he's under it, brings it in for the third out of the inning. Spring Mills. 
gets one run on an RBI double from Tyler Moreland. We'll go to the bottom of inning number one when we come back at Spring Mills 1, Loris 0. It's the late nights. It's the early mornings. It's working in the sunshine and rain and snow. It's the dedication, the care, the hours of training that led to the winner's circle. It's our job, our passion, our lives. We are the horsemen. The National Maritime Center primary mission is to credential all U.S. Mariners. We have approximately 250 employees here in Martinsburg, West Virginia. Most people aren't aware of the quality of life here in Berkeley County. We have a lot of employees that are from the area. We obviously have folks that have to do tours here. And it's kind of uh, you know, a little bit of a hidden secret of how nice the quality of life is here. One run for Spring Mills in the top of the first. It was an RBI double for Tyler Moreland with two outs, scoring Bryce Farrow, who reached on a walk to lead the game off. Now in the bottom of inning number one is Loris will step up to the plate for the first time. It'll be Gage Smith leading it off against Corey Hammond. Hammond 2-2 two and two on the season in 23 innings of work on the mound. This will be a start number five for him, and he's played in nine total games coming in two today, a 4.261 ERA. Has allowed 35 hits, 27 runs. Only 14 of those runs have been earned. And not going to be a strikeout guy, or at least a strikeout heavy guy, 18 strikeouts on the season. But not going to be a walk guy either. Only three walks allowed through 23 innings, which is uh, pretty impressive at this level. So expect a lot of balls to be in play behind him. That's pretty impressive at any level. Yeah. Three walks in 23 innings. He throws strikes. Uh, Cody's older, Corey's older brother, Cody, uh, pitched for Spring Mills, was a hard thrower, and I think he's playing at Addison Broadus now. I played some first base, pitched in a little bit. Uh, Coach Coombs says that Corey is uh, not as overpowering as Cody was, but then again, Corey's only a sophomore. Yes, he's got, he's got a lot of time to do. develop. Engage Smith leading it off for the Loris Lions, who come in at 10 and 9. The Smith playing center field today. No official season stats. We do know that Smith went one for five in the first game of the Mingo Classic, Mingo Bay Classic yesterday. That's the first pitch to Smith. In for strike one on the low inside corner. Here comes that 0-1 from Hammond. Low and outside, ball one. But a good looking pitch, nevertheless. Yes. A couple inches more to the inside. That's going to be a, a good pitch. and something that Smith's not going to be able to do anything with. Here comes that 1-1 one, one to Smith inside for ball two. Smith looked like he was loading up to maybe take a hack at that and realized it was going to be too far inside. Would have jammed him up. Good discipline at the plate. Smith now heading the count 2-1. Here comes that 2-1 pitch. Now ground ball to the left side of the infield. A shortstop, Tyler Moreland has it over to first, and they'll get him. A Braden McDaniel with a good stretch, holding on to it, fighting through the shadows for out number one. A great play by Tyler Moreland, uh, judging the bounces very well and throwing across his body for the first out of the inning. That was a very nice play. It was the throw that was the most impressive because he was moving to his, to his right, moving away towards third base, moving away from first base, and and momentum carrying the wrong, the wrong way for the throw, but made an accurate throw. Now out of the windup will be Corey Hammond to Carson Granger. The first pitch to Granger, swing and a miss on a ball that was well out of the strike zone high. And Hammond's moving the ball around the zone. He was first hitter, he had first couple were down and away, then up and in. He starts this guy up. Hot. Here comes that, I want a breaking ball. Out in front on it was Granger. It'll dribble down the third baseline and go foul. Now Hammond with a favorable count ahead on Granger, 0-2. Granger playing third base today, similar to our leadoff hitter Gage Smith. He went one for five in yesterday's game as well. That game against Penfield in which Loris lost 8-7. to seven. Yeah. See if Hammond goes after him here or nibbles. Here comes the next pitch. That one low and in the dirt for ball one. Yeah, that was a... 60-foot fastball. So 1-2 now the count to Carson Granger. Again dribbled one foul down the third baseline and a hardy cut on a fastball 
up and out of the zone for strike one to get the at-bat started. Here comes the 1-2, a breaking ball. The inside corner, ring him up. Looking as Carson Granger going to go down, looking on a breaking ball that started coming right at Granger in the batter's box and broke right into the inside corner. A phenomenal pitch for Corey Hammond for out number two. Yeah, and that, that froze Granger. He thought that was inside. Nice late break. And like you said, I think Hammond's done a very good job early in this one uh, moving his pitches around the strike zone, making it tough for the Loris hitters so far to figure out where they want to locate it. Tanner Kennedy now will step up and take ball one low inside in the dirt. Kennedy playing left field in today's game. Was two for four yesterday and did come across the plate for one of these seven runs. Here comes that 1-0 from Ham and that one. A strike in the bottom third. Looked like it was at the knees and across the outside corner. Angle makes it <laughs> yes. hard to tell exactly where it's going over the plate, but... The 1-1 pitch, that one's going to be a foul on the left field line. believe it's going to get out of play. It would be a tough play for Schenzel to make regardless, and it will drop foul. He gave it a good chase. He did. That was the ball trailing away as Kennedy, a left-handed batter, was late on that one, driving it down the left field line, but it was trailing foul, and it would have been a very long run for Schenzel, who's probably fading a little bit more to center field with the left-handed batter. And had he made the catch, I would not have known. Because I can't yes, see down we're looking corner. directly into the dugout and out on the third baseline for any ball deep in foul territory. Here comes the one two, uh, two Kennedy. This one flares over the third base dugout for another foul ball. The count remains one two. And he was just flicking that off to stay alive. That's what you got to do at some point at the high school level. The pitcher's going to make a mistake, so you got to foul off the ones to stay alive and hope you get something you can drive. Again, here's the one-two from Hammond. That one inside for ball two. Hayden Moss not quite able to hang on to that one. No harm, no foul. Nobody on base. Dropped right in front of him. With the count now even at two balls, two strikes to Tanner Kennedy. Out of the windup. Here's the two-two. And a sharp hit ball down the first baseline. Kennedy ahead on that one, but it does go foul. Kennedy making Hammond work here. And the best at bat we've seen. So far for Loris, again, only the third at-bat of the day for Loris, but definitely making Corey Hammond work is Tanner Kennedy. Again, here comes that 2-2 two -two with two outs. Oh, a nice. swing and a miss on a, a ball that was off speed, hits the dirt, uh, stepping in front of the home plate. It was Aiden Moss throwing down to first. McDaniel brings it in for the third out of the inning, so a 1-2-3 inning here in the bottom of the first uh, for Spring Mills, and we'll go to the top of the second with the Cardinals leading 1-0. It's one of the toughest times you'll ever face when someone close to you passes away. It's a swirl of papers to sign and arrangements to be made, all while you're dealing with grief. At Brown Funeral Home, we encourage you to pre-plan. Pre-planning not only makes things easier for you, it protects you from rising costs. At Brown Funeral Home, our families are precious to us, and so are yours. Brown Funeral Home in Martinsburg, Inwood, and Charlestown, Ranson. Life can get in the way these days. We all know that. Work commitments, social commitments, volunteer commitments, family commitments. You put your heart into all of it. You've got enough to worry about already. Your roof shouldn't be one of those things. Everything should just work. But when your roof is in need of an upgrade, you shouldn't have to worry about that either. Modern Renovations, your four-state roofing solution. Reminding you that home is where the heart really is. Gary Geffert's music as we come back here for the top of inning number two. Set to lead it off will be Aiden Moss uh, playing behind the plate today. Now, come on, Gary. You getting down? I know this is your music. I, I could get down. I just can't get up. <laughs> <laughs> One nothing. your score. Spring Mills in front. They had a two-out RBI double off the bat of Tyler Moreland. That scored Bryce Farah, who got things going with a walk to lead the game off in the top of the first. And that first inning was typical of what we've seen down here. Somebody walks, and then they score. Yep. A lot of small ball being played. Unless it was them. I'm trying to remember the team name yesterday before Jefferson that hit five home runs, including oh. three in the seventh inning. First pitch. Foul ball. Will it get out of play? It's going to be a tough play for the first baseman Granger to make, and it will get out of play, barely over the fence on the first baseline. So Aiden Moss fouls off the first pitch he sees. 
for strike one. The fence down there is about head high for Granger, but he's able to reach up a little bit and get over it. But yeah, Off the bat, thought that one may stay in play. Had just enough on it for Moss to live to see another pitch. Here comes the 0-1 from Jordan. This one low and outside for ball one in the dirt. A good backhanded stop from Jacob Black, today's starting catcher. And Jordan's struggling with his control here a little bit early. Again, weren't able to get season stats. I can't tell you what Jordan's done throughout the season. But here comes the 1-1 inside. and did get a piece of Aiden Moss, and Moss will take first base on a hit by pitch. That's the kind of pitch, if you're going to get hit, you want to get hit by a breaking that, ball that, that uh, skims yes. the jersey. <laughs> yes, the jersey part of the body. So if you're going to if you're going to get hit, and that's what a, you want to do. So 14. We have a courtesy runner. I can't quite pick up the number. Looks like it's going to be number 14, and that'll be Corey Whitener. Corey Whitener. Today's Corey courtesy Whitener runner. Running at first, the batter, number 19. Aiden Schenzel now Schenzel up to the plate. Shenzel, a 419 hitter as he takes strike one. Now, Whitener's got a healthy lead over there. He does. We'll see. We saw Farrow uh, take second base back in. He topped the first inning. Took him a few pitches to get to second base, but ended up there on a stolen base. And there goes Whitener now to second base. He got a good jump, and he is in standing up to second base. A great throw by Jacob Black, but just couldn't quite get the speedy Whitener. He had no shot because of the jump that White had gotten. That's his first stolen base on the year. That ball was outside, so the count now 1-1. One, one. And Whitener taking a few steps back to second now as he had a generous lead at second base. Here's the 1-1 one, one from Jordan. That's a ground ball to the left side of the infield. Blocked in front but gets away from our shortstop, Cole Stewart, and he'll have no play. A runner's at the corners now as Whitener goes to third base, and Shenzel will reach on the E6. It was a pretty standard ground ball, but just took a bad hop at the end, bouncing up off the left shoulder of Cole Stewart playing shortstop today for Loris. Well, I think Stewart lost his concentration when White ran in front of him. That's, That's a tough play for a shortstop or a second baseman. You have somebody running in front of you to still uh, manage the speed of the ball and watch the, uh, the bounces. Strike one on the outside corner to Braden McDaniel, the number Eight batter, batting 125 on the season, but only one for eight, so not a whole lot of experience at the plate for him to I, this point in the season. And I think Stewart, too, is looking at the possibility of a play at third base. Would have been a tough play to make at third base as the L1 misses outside for ball have. one. But it looked, it looked to me like he saw him go by, looked a little bit to third base, then the ball came up on him and, and ate him up. Here comes the 1-1 pitch. That one misses outside for ball two. Not a overly big lead for Aiden Schenzel standing at first base. As we will now have a visit to the mound by pitching coach David Smith. As he is well, looking like the right arm trying to talk about a release point and coming over the top as he's talking about, yeah, throwing that right arm in the air, talking about release point. A lot of talk about that. Yeah, there's been a lot of talk about that. We saw John Lowry Sr. doing the same thing last night with uh, it was either Colin Horowitz or Hayden Stang. Just went out and went, hey, we're noticing something here. you got to change that release point just a little bit. 2-1 the count to Braden McDaniel, playing first base today, batting in that number eight spot. Standing at first is Aiden Schenzel. And Corey Whitener at third base, the courtesy runner for today's catcher, Aiden Moss, who was hit by a pitch to get this inning started. And he puts the ball in, puts the ball in on the ground. He's got to run. Uh, again, not a huge lead for Shenzlow over at first base, as he will be off to second base. A swing and a miss by McDaniel. A throw down to second. Cut off. Coming in was Cole Stewart trying to see if a double steal was on. Uh, there wasn't one. So a stolen base for Aiden Shenzel. And Coach Combs has obviously decided that he thinks they can run on this. Uh, so far, this battery, a pretty. Pretty well done as the 2-2 low and inside on the breaking ball to McDaniel. The count now runs full at 3-2. So yeah, now 3-for-3 three three on stolen base attempts, although that one first and third defense. I don't know what the play would have been at the bag itself. As again, Cole Stork coming in to cut that one off. Here comes the 3-2 and staying alive. Found one off down the third baseline is McDaniel. Gets over the fence, but he lives to see another pitch in the full count. 
Well, I think I think Chensel had it stolen, and part of it is the watch Jacob. He's kind of slow to the plate. Here comes that 3-2 again to McDaniel. This one a ground ball a to the left side of the infield. We'll score oh, a run. It hits by two. Cole Stewart, and one run scores. Schenzel holds up at third base, not yeah. seeing Coach Combs. And Coach Combs quickly over to Aiden Schenzel, wondering what he was looking at because it wasn't head coach Justin Combs. That should have a scored two runs. Regardless, it'll be a one run in off the bat of uh, Braden McDaniel. Uh, won't go down as an RBI. It'll go down as a... No, I think he gets Yeah, up. okay, that probably gets, with with no outs in the inning. Yeah, we'll call that an RBI, Maybe but still reaching on the E6. And that was a routine ground ball. Yeah, that one didn't look like it took any bad hops. Just got by a shortstop. Cole Stewart now to the, bat, the bottom of the order. Riley Hardaby takes one low in the dirt for ball one. Well, Matt Miller was talking about that with us between the – before this game about uh, – See high school players not squaring up, and that's one of the things Cole Stewart didn't do. He had time to square up on that ball, and he just didn't. He tried to just take it off to the side. The 1 0 to Hardaby outside for ball two. Again, runners at the corners. McDaniel at first, reaching on the air, and now at third is Aiden Schenzel, who also got on base via the air. Third baseman playing in, Carson Granger. And now the 2-0 to Hardaby right down the heart of the plate for strike one. And McDaniel not getting much of a lead at all over at first base. The shadows may be playing a little bit of an impact on that left side of the infield. The sun facing that direction as it's going down. The a breaking ball on the 2-1. A strike on the outside corner to Riley Hardaby. A 3-13 hitter coming in. 11 runs driven in and a 389 on base percentage. Got knotted up at 2-2 in the 2-2 pitch. A long foul ball down the right field line. Does get out of play. So Hardaby will stay alive to see another pitch. He was about a week ahead of that yes. one. 2-0, the Spring Mills advantage. Here in the top of inning number two. No outs yet. Here to report is the 2-2. Misses outside. Sliding over was Jacob Black to make sure it stayed in front. And the count now full at three balls, two strikes. And McDaniel still playing first to close to first base. He has not attempted a steal this year. Now the payoff pitch on the 3-2 and a fly ball that is going into shallow left field, running over as a shortstop Cole Stewart. That's going to drop in, and Schendel's going to come home to score. Working his way to second base is Braden McDaniel. He had to pause momentarily to make sure that ball was going to get down, but then sprints to second base. So a ball in the Bermuda Triangle behind third base that dropped in, and we've seen a lot of those this tournament too. As yeah, It's going to be an RBI single for Riley Hardaby uh, scoring the second run of this inning. Spring Mills takes the three. Nothing lead. And McDaniel stops at second. The shortstop made a long run for that. Left fielder had to make a long run for that. And man, that couldn't have bounced more than about three inches inside the line. Bryce Farrow back at the top of the order. Squares around a bunt. It fouls off to the screen behind home plate. On the move was Braden McDaniel. So attempting to lay down the bunt and move at least McDaniel to third base, hoping to move uh, hard to beat a second. Hard to be, man, Mr. Sign. Yeah, he was standing with a secondary lead. Not really on the move, but Farrow, the leadoff batter, now behind on the count 0-1. A check throw back to second base, and it will get into center field. And McDaniel will have to stay at second as Cole Stewart was laying on top of him a bit. Well, when he drove, that killed the chance to, to, uh, to get to third. But on the other hand, they had him with a half-decent throw. Yeah, jump throw by... Jump turned by Caleb Jordan, and Cole Stewart had to reach, and he did deflect a little bit, probably saving him from going deeper into center field. He pitched to Bryce Farrow on the 0-1 outside for ball one. And once again, the second baseman is, looks like he's about four feet from second base, so that the right side of the infield is way open. First baseman's playing behind the runner. The 1-1 from Farrow, a check swing that he barely gets a piece of, but it goes behind Home plate, a little bit to the right of us, hitting the backstop. And now Farrow behind on the count, 1-2. A concrete backstop. So the ball, depending on how it hits, it could bounce around it going concrete from a dugout to dugout. Here's the 1-2 pitch to Farrow, and he ropes one down the third baseline, but it'll go foul. A sharply hit ball that Farrow was just moments ahead on. 
as that would have scored one, maybe two, with how fast that ball came off the bat down the third baseline. Now behind home plate a little, is a little bit like Martinsburg, about the same distance, and like Martinsburg has a lower concrete wall, and every once in a while that ball hits there and bounces right back to the catcher. Again, here comes the 1-2 to Farrow, and Farrow bounces one to the left side of the infield. Coming up with it is Cole Store at shortstop. He'll step on second base to get the lead runner, but no chance for a double play as Farrow was moving quickly down the line. Advancing to third will be Braden McDaniel, but being caught in the fielder's choice was Riley Hardaby for the first out of the inning. But he also moved, uh, moved McDaniel over to third, 90 feet from home plate. And so, I'm betting Mr. Farrow is on a run here pretty soon. It's a, a bet I could go in on. Again, runners at the corners, one out here in the bottom of inning, or the top of inning number two, the first pitch to Corey Hammond, low and inside for ball one. And Farrow, again, not getting, none of the the uh, Spring Mills runners have gotten huge leads, but they're still, now Farrow is moving off a little further, taking another step. Here comes that 1-0. No runners on the move. That pitch low and inside again to Corey Hammond. He's ahead in the count 2-0. Again, really surprised Farrow hasn't been on the move. Uh, look at this pitch. Just, they can't pitch out. With, they don't want to pitch out on 2-0. Nope. Jordan ready for the 2-0. This one right down the middle for strike one. Now it wouldn't surprise me if on this pitch you saw Bryce Farrow on the move. One down. After the ground out, fielder's choice. These six unassisted. Cole Stort stepping on second base. Checking back over is Caleb Jordan. Bryce Farrow back in safe on the dive. Jordan was thinking with you. Standing at third base is Braden McDaniel. First base is Bryce Farrow. Farrow now is on the move on the 2-1. A ground ball to the shortstop. It gets through the hole as Cole Stort was coming over to cover. That's going to score a run run. A Farrow into third on the RBI single off the bat of Corey Hammond. So Hammond, a RBI single scoring. Braden McDaniel, Bryce Farrow over to third, and that's the third run in here in the top of inning number two. And Spring Mills has the 4 nothing advantage. Now that was that was a nice piece of baseball because they had, you know, with the stolen base, and the shortstop going over to cover, and I don't know why because the second baseman is standing up there, but that just opened up the left side. He doesn't go. That's a routine ground ball. So Bryce Ferris standing on third, just 90 feet away, one out here as Tyler Gilpin now up to the plate. Ball low and away for the first pitch to Gilpin, ball one. Black had to move a bit to get his body in front of that. That was way in the left-hand batter's box. Here comes the one who's Gilpin, sends a ground ball to the left side of the infield, possibly turning to the play to second in, over to first for the double play. A ground ball to Cole Stort, a 6-4-3 double play as Andrew Abufkin fires it over to Reagan Granger to end inning number two, but the damage done for Spring Mills, they score three in the inning, and they now lead 4-0 as we head to the bottom of inning number two. The level of care that I got at WVU Medicine was top notch. If you're not progressing in healthcare, you're falling behind. It's really an integration, looking at a clinical care network, looking at the good people who can help push the envelope and raise the bar for delivering quality healthcare product. To have my life back is absolutely a blessing. I am beyond thankful for WVU Medicine. I absolutely 100% have my life back. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. 4-0 as we head to the bottom of inning number two. The sun almost completely down here at Loris High School. The host, Loris Lions, hoping to spark the bats as they've given up four runs through an inning and a half. And continuing what we've seen, while this time it wasn't a walk that started the scoring, this was a, another freebie hit batter. Yep. Either way, an unearned base runner. Corey Hammond coming back out for his second inning of work. 
His warm-up pitch is complete. And now Tucker Reeves will step in, the cleanup hitter. DHing today for Loris. Again for the first baseman, Reagan Granger. One for three yesterday. Struck out once, but also scored a run, did Tucker Reeves. As the infield coming in to talk to Corey Hammond. That little huddle breaks at the mound, and we're ready for the bottom of inning number two. It's one of those high school rituals. Yep. Out of the windup will be Corey Hammond. And he comes, sets now, delivers to Reeves, who fouls one off down the third baseline, just narrowly escaping the dugout of the home Loris Lions. Coach running it down. Seen some good effort by both head coaches running down foul balls down the third baseline. As Hammond now again out of the windup for the 0-1. This one misses low and away for ball one. And they're playing the shortstop Moreland is, is pulled over towards the third base side. He won one a breaking ball that just misses inside. Thought that one broke in and caught the inside edge of the zone. Wants to stay just a few inches too far inside. Now the 2-1 to Reeves. This one raked into left field, coming over on it, making a great catch as Aiden Schenzel in left field, uh, playing perfect depth to catch that rope out into left field off the bat of Tucker Reeves, and Schenzel uh, saves what would have been a stand-up double. That was. He hit that ball hard. Put a little star next to that one on the line out to left field. That was an absolute rope off the bat of Tucker Reeves. That's going to be a double against a lot of teams, but Aiden Schenzel playing that one perfectly. Now stepping in, Cole Store today's starting, starting shortstop. The first pitch to Store today. Fastball high and inside for ball one. Store two for three yesterday and came across to score two runs. The lights now on here at Loris. Not going to take full effect for probably another inning, inning and a half depending on the speed of this game. And my jacket's on and zipped up. <laughs> Here comes the 1-0. This one low in the dirt, bounced in front of the plate to store it off the right hand of Corey Hammond. So now store it ahead in the count 2-0. The spiffy White Sox jacket would be better if you were sporting the team from the north side of Chicago, but not going to get on you too much. Here's the 2-0, fouled off behind the plate, Cole Stewart. Now the count runs 2-1. Next year. Next year you're going to, what, wear the Cubs jacket? No, no, next next year's the White Sox year. <laughs> I'll believe that when I see it. You will next year. Now the 2-1 to Cole Stewart. He lifts this one into center field. Uh, coming in on it is Bryce Farrow. Camps underneath it for out number two. Farrow went back on that one and had to sprint in as I think he took a couple too many steps backwards but was able to make a good play on it and adjust his angle, come in for what? Looked once he got there like a routine catch in center field. Yeah, I thought that one was going to bring rain. That was, yeah. hit, that was hit pretty high in the air. And I think Farrow thought it was going to go deeper than it did, just trying to judge the angle. But, again, sprinting in to make a good play on it. That was one of those hit 360 feet. It's just the 360 feet was vertical. Jacob Black now the batter as he takes strike one on the breaking ball over the heart of the plate. Him pretty efficient so far. One for three with two runs driven in yesterday. That comes the 0-1. That one misses high and inside. Kind of even at one and one. In the top of the third, we'll get into our third inning trivia. Brought to you by the Hagerstown Sun and Hosses Steak and See. So that coming up as driving into the opposite field, a high chopper brought in by Tyler Gilpin over to first for the third out of the inning. That one I thought was going to drive into right field, took a high bounce, but Gilpin playing it perfectly, uh, sends it over to Braden McDaniel for the 4-3, out number three here in the bottom of the second inning, and another three up, three down for the Loris Lions. We'll head to the top of inning number three. It's Spring Mills 4, Loris 0. Welcome to La Bella Vita, named for my grandma Vita. Our mountaintop getaway honors her legacy while complementing the home's spectacular views. This recently renovated property boasts a breathtaking landscape of Deep Creek Lake while providing great open interior spaces for a sensational vacation. You'll immediately notice the great room allows for entertaining, dining, and relaxing after long days on the lake or skiing on the slopes of Wisp. Your family and friends will enjoy relaxing in all the open spaces. 
the home features six bedrooms, including four that are private suites. And each of the four levels of this home feature amazing visibility as far as the eye can see. Like our family, we hope you enjoy making memories here on the mountain. We love sharing the spacious, warm, and inviting home that overlooks the lake. Cheers to the beautiful life, La Bella Vita. Top, top of inning number three, Spring Mills ahead in this one, 4-0. Three in the second, one in the first. And then the third inning, it's our trivia inning brought to you by the Hagerstown Suns and Hosses Steak and See in the Aiken Center on Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. Check them out on Facebook. And remember, for a great meal at a great price, stop by Hosses Steak and See where your family wants to eat. Here in the top of inning number three, we will give you the station telephone number and our trivia question. The first to call in and get the answer correct with Caleb Flair back at the studio will win $30 in Hosses gift cards and a four-pack of tickets to the Hagerstown Suns game of your choice the rest of this season. Tyler Moreland set to lead it off for Spring Mills. He had an RBI double uh, scoring the first run of the game. Bryce Farrow back in the first inning. An absolute laser out to left field. First pitch to Moreland, a breaking ball that misses high and inside for ball one. And the, the shortstop, uh, look at it for Moreland to pull the ball. He's positioned over towards third base. There's the 1-0 to Moreland right down the middle that he flies one into shallow right field. Coming in on it is Connor Roth actually going back on it. Make that Andrew Buffkin, and he brings it in for the first out of the inning. The way Connor Roth was coming in, thought he was going to make the play on it. Andrew Buffkin goes out into shallow center, or shallow right field, rather, uh, to make the catch for out number one. And Buffkin sort of circled that a little bit. like. 22, Evan Hurt. So just two pitches to Tyler Morrill and a quick at bat as Evan Hurt now will step in. The first pitch to Hurt. This one a foul ball over the screen right in front of us. Now down 0-1. But not down on us. Now Stewart's moved back over towards a more neutral shortstop position. Caleb Jordan out of the stretch, comes set and delivers the 0-1 low and away in the dirt for ball one. Not something you see all that often when the bases are empty. A pitcher out of the stretch, but maybe where he feels most comfortable. A lot of times, most of the time, you see pitchers out of the windup. But here comes that 1-1 from the stretch. The 1-1 misses inside for ball two. A ball that was a borderline pitch. I just heard a couple of sighs from the crowd around us here at Loris. Again, a home game, so they were very well represented in the stands. Here comes the 2-1, and a ground ball hit to the third baseman. Goes off his glove. A Carson Granger moving to his left. The ball goes off his glove and in uh, to left field for a base hit. It would have been a tough play for Cole Stewart to make as the shortstop backing up, but uh, Carson Granger moving to his left. The ball nicks off the front of his glove and goes to the uh, shortstop position of Cole Stewart where he had been playing and trickles into left field for a base hit. Country, number 18, Aiden Moss. You're a kind scorer, Mr. Crawford. That would have been a tough play to make. That took a big hop. I thought third baseman should have handled it. Stewart had no chance once it went off his glove. First pitch to Aiden Moss. Low in the dirt for ball one. Staying put at first base as Evan Hurd as Jacob Black able to crowd the baseball back in. You know, Warren Spahn always said, I throw a ground ball, I expect to get it out. Maybe two. A long pause. Now the one who misses inside, almost getting Aiden Moss, who spins out of the way on one foot. A little bit of a, I look like a, I'm trying to think of the, what's the ballerina? The, Depends on which one you're thinking of. I, anyway, a, the spin, a spin on one foot, not calling Aiden Moss a ballerina, <laughs> but a spin on one foot, looking very acrobatic. Or a single, Check, single axle? Yes. <laughs> Checking back over to first. Evan Hurt back in safely on the dive back. Barishnikov, according to Matt Miller. Name dropper. Here comes the 2-0 oh, and a hardy cut swing and a miss from Aiden Moss on a ball that looked like it was going to miss low and inside. That was a nice little change of it. It just disappeared on Moreland. All right, let's get into our third inning trivia. 
Again, the station telephone for the first time, the station telephone number 304-263-6540. Again, that's 304-263-6540. Check back over to first. Back in safe is Evan Hurt. Wait a minute. Third baseman is playing way up. I hope he's got good dental coverage. <laughs> Here's our third inning trivia question. What was the original name of the Houston Astros? The original name of the Houston Astros. Again, it's 304-263-6540 as the 2-1 low and away for ball three. You know, I've noticed that you guys have trivia questions to which I know the answer only when I'm here. Now, you're a baseball mind. You should know them all. 3-1 the count. Now to our batter, Aiden Moss. Here comes that 3-1. That one misses low and inside for ball four, and Moss will take a first base, moving Evan Hurt up to second base. We expect to see Corey Whitener, the courtesy runner for Moss, who's playing behind the plate today. And that is exactly what we see as Moss will go and get that catcher's gear on. And Moss now has gotten on base twice without having to put the bat on the ball. Again, our trivia question, what was the original name of the Houston Astros? Runners on first and second. One out as Aiden Schenzel now steps up to the plate. Check back to second base and I believe hitting the helmet of Evan Hurt as Hurt kind of ducked going back in. Not a slide, but took a couple steps back and then ducked the head. I believe that nicked his helmet as it I think ricocheted right. over to second base. I think you're right, Matt. So Schenzel will await his first pitch of the at-bat. And here it comes. This one missing inside for ball one. Thought it was a good frame by Black. Thought they may get the strike call. Well, Jordan's problem is that he's been so wild that umpire isn't thinking strike. Runners on first and second. It's Schenzel at the plate. 1-0 count. Here it is from Caleb Jordan. This one, a strike on the outside corner. Evening the count at 1-1. Again, our trivia question, what was the original name of the Houston Astros? Call 304-263-6540. The 1-1 one, one low and in the dirt for ball two. And Caleb Jordan is missing short on a lot of these pitches. We've seen more pitches than not that have been out of the strike zone, ending up low and in the dirt. The count 2-1 to Shenzel. Here's that 2-1 pitch. Shenzel turns on one, away ahead of that one. As a good job by Justin Combs getting out of the way down the third baseline. That looked like that was way in on his hands, too. And inside pitch that he was way early on. The guy now even at two balls, two strikes. Again, Caleb, when we get a winner, go ahead and shoot me their name and where they're from. That's the 2-2 two -two pitch. High and inside, Ooh. popping out of the glove of Jacob Black. He's able to run it down and keep Evan Hurd at second base and Corey Whitener at first base. And the count now full at 3-2. Uh, Schenzel. Looked like he was about ready to go to the dugout. He may have thought that was a strike. But Not going to get that call out when the ball pops out of the glove. So now the payoff pitch on the 3-2 to Schenzel. This one oh. will ring him up, so oh. he'll walk back as he thought that one was ball four. So a little bit different of a reaction on back-to-back -back pitches. But that one apparently does catch the strike zone on the outer edge. That for what we have now is the second strikeout of the day for Caleb Jordan. Yeah, I'm with Schenzel on that. That that. <laughs> look kind of low to yeah, me. Yeah, looked low and away from our angle, but again, we're a little bit to the left of behind home plate. As the first pitch to Braden McDaniels. McDaniel a fouled off down the third baseline and out of play. We do have a winner, Michael Phelan from Martinsburg. So congratulations, Michael. As the 0-1 misses high, I believe, is what... Yeah. Our home plate umpire is going to say for ball one. The count now even at one and one. So, again, congratulations, Michael Phelan. Here comes the one-one. This one, a strike on the inside corner. And Caleb Jordan in a situation he has not been in often so far in this game. Ahead in the count on Braden McDaniel. One ball, two strikes. Here comes that one-two pitch. Now ground ball back up the middle. Don't know if anybody's going to get there. A great backhanded stop by a Bluffkin. A attempted throw over to first, but a good job getting there and hustling down the line for McDaniel. He will be safe on what will be a infield single. And Bluffkin saved a run with that with that uh, diving stop of the ground ball. 
And they it got up quick and made a good throw. It was not quite a bang-bang play at first, but it's a good play by McDaniel hustling up the line. He only beat the throw there by about a step, maybe even a half step. So now the bases are loaded. Evan Hurd at third, uh, Corey Whitener at second, and Braden McDaniel. Standing at first base, bases loaded. Two outs here is a sharp hit ball down the right field line. That's going to be fair a fair ball. baseball off the bat of Riley Hardaby. That's going to be a double scoring run run. Two runs across the plate. Will there be three? Justin Combs waving around Braden McDaniel. Play at the plate, ball a bobbled by Jacob Black, and that third run will score as Braden McDaniel crosses the plate. And a double and an advance on the throw is a three RBI double for Riley Hardaby down the right field line. A phenomenal hit driving in three. That ball hugged the line and then rolled into the corner, all the way into the corner. What's that, 315 feet away, we said? Yeah, down 315 in down the right field line. And then the throw, throw came in. He hit the relay band well, but the throw coming in was a little bit up the third baseline and short hopped the catcher. And again, a double that he advanced on the throw. So now we're back to the top of the order, and Bryce Farah has to duck out of the way of ball one that was coming right at his left ear hole. Spring Mills is breaking this one open. 7 nothing now. Your score is fair. Rips one down the line, but just foul over the third base bag for the first strike of the at-bat. So Riley Hardaby gets RBI number 12, 13, and 14 with that swing of the bat out of the number 9 spot. And his third is, that's his fourth RBI of the game. He did have the RBI single back last inning on the single. He's having a career today. <laughs> Having a very good game, so actually make that RBI number 13, 14, and 15 as 12 came back in inning number two. Back to the top of the order with Bryce Farrow. Here comes the 1-1 pitch to Farrow. This one misses high and inside, ball two. And you wonder how much longer Caleb Jordan will be out on the mound. What's the pitch limit here in South Carolina? South I do Carolina. believe I just saw somebody come back into the dugout that was throwing in the pen. The 2-1 to Farrow, the exact same location as the pitch before. This one high and inside. The count now 3-1 to Bryce Farrow. Yeah, the bullpen here is out of our view. It's uh, down on down the left field line behind the dugout. Uh, totally obscured for us. The 3-1. Farrow takes a strike on the inside corner. And yeah, at this point, I'm thinking you got to make Jordan throw you strikes well, if was, you're Spring Mills. And that was a pretty good pitch. And Farrow knows he's got another pitch to hit. With two outs, here comes a 3-2 to Farrow, and Farrow lifts one into center field. Way, going back on it is Gage Smith, and he hauls it in for the third out of the inning. But three runs do come across on the three-RBI double for Riley Hardaby. So back-to-back -back innings with three runs for the Cardinals. They now lead 7-0, the bottom of the third, coming up next. Ron Hawker here. You have no idea what Johnny's goes through to bring you the best seafood around. We have snow crab clusters, shrimp, crab meat, fish, all the best seafood you want at Johnny's. It's a tough job out here, but our customers are worth it. Johnny's with two great locations, 1456 Winchester Avenue, Marchburg, and Route 11 South in Chambersburg. The National Maritime Center primary mission is to credential all U.S. Mariners. We have approximately 250 employees here in Martinsburg, West Virginia. Most people aren't aware of the quality of life here in Berkeley County. We have a lot of employees that are from the area. We obviously have folks that have to do tours here. And it's kind of uh, you know, a little bit of a hidden secret of how nice the quality of life is here. The National Maritime Center primary mission is... Right now it's all Spring Mills as the Cardinals lead 7-0. Back-to-back innings with three runs. Adding a run back in the first inning gets us to where we are at this point. It's been uh, six batters and six outs so far for Loris. They have yet to have a base runner as it'll be the number seven hitter, Andrew Bufkin, who will lead it off here in the bottom of inning number three. We'll also get to the answer to our third inning trivia coming up in this inning as well. Give you some some info on that as well. As well, we have a meeting on the mound before Buffkin steps in. We'll give you the answer to that trivia question. Again, it was what was the original name of the Houston Astros 
And from 1962 to 1964, Mr. Geffert, they were known as the what? Colt 45s. Correct. You are my good man. And then there was some minor trademark infringement issues. With the Baltimore Colts, because the Houston Colt 45s kind of just went by the Houston Colts. Andrew Bufkin, two for four yesterday, drove in two as he steps in for the first time today. 7 nothing. the Spring Mills lead in the bottom of inning number three. Corey Hammond back on the mound for his third inning of work. First pitch to Bufkin, low and outside in the dirt for ball one. On the season, Hammond's had a fairly impressive uh, 62% rate of throwing strikes on the first pitch. Here's the 1-0. That one misses low and outside for ball two. Didn't miss by much, but just a little too far outside and looked a little below the knees. So now Buffkin ahead in the count 2-0. Here comes that 2-0 delivery and a sharp hit ball down the third baseline. It'll just get foul past the third base bag for the first strike of the at-bat to Buffkin playing second base today. Went down and got a pitch low in the zone. Yanked it foul. Again, we want to uh, thank the Hagerstown Suns and Hossa Stake and See. The third inning trivia brought to you by those uh, two organizations, Hossa Stake and See and the Aiken Center on Edwin Miller Boulevard. Yeah. The 2-1 one, one in for strike two on Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. Check them out on Facebook. And remember, for a great meal at a great price, stop by Hossa's Stake and See where your family wants to eat. And Hammond moving down and, roll, down and away, followed by up and in for a strike. The 2-2, two, two, the attempted curveball, that one. That was a, a little upper off, and yeah, inner. A <laughs> little upper and inner, really upper and behind her as it went behind. Andrew Buffkin, the count now full at 3-2. Some more information about the Houston Colt 45s. It was from 1962 to 64 before they became the Houston Astros in 65. In 62, went 64 and 96, and then in 63 and 64, had an identical record of 66 and 96. Here comes that 3-2 fouled off. Buffkin right behind home plate, and he stays alive on the full count. The guy by the name of Ken Johnson pitched a no-hitter for the Colt 45s and lost it one to nothing when a run scored on an error. It's a tough one to swallow. Yep. So once again, the 3-2 count. It'll be Corey Hammond out of the windup with the bases loaded here in the bottom of the third. Here's that 3-2 lifted over on the right side of the infield. It's coming back and going to drop behind first base. Uh, Tyler Gilpin making a run at it, as was Connor Gottholm in right field. Nobody going to get to it as it drops into no man's land for a base hit for Andrew Buffkin. And Loris now has their first base runner of the game on the single into shallow right. Yeah, it looked to me like it was a near collision out in right field. So now we've seen like one. Right hit into no man's land behind third base and one into no man's land behind first base. So yeah. both Bermuda Triangles here in the field have been utilized as Aiden Moss goes out and has a conversation with Corey Hammond. As you can now relax, the no-hitter watch is over. I'm, I'm relaxed. <laughs> that was not a hard hit ball. He, no. he just popped it up a goal. I lucky. think that was trying to just stay alive as checking back over to first in on the slide is Bufkin. Flying the tag was Braden McDaniel, but not necessarily needed. Bufkin back in pretty easily. Connor Roth, now the batter, the right-hander that takes ball one low and away. But Bufkin did what I think just virtually every high school coach preaches, and that is two strikes, you protect the plate, just get the bat on the ball and put it in play. And and that's what he did. Good thing happened. Here comes that 1-0 and a ball. Sharp hit out to center field. Farrow working to his left and is in perfect position as the Spring Mills outfield uh, playing the baseballs perfectly today. Uh, Farrow on the sharp hit ball from Connor Raw took about uh, four steps to his right, our left, and was in perfect position depth-wise to bring that baseball in. Yeah, just caught it chest high. Saw an equally a good play made by Aiden Schenzel out in left field. And everybody playing what seems to be, the, luckily, at the perfect depth to make great plays in the outfield. So one down now as the ball gets away uh, from Aiden Moss on the first pitch to uh, Caleb Jordan. Moving to second will be Andrew Bufkin. And not going over very quickly was Aiden Moss. And he had no idea where Yeah, he had no was. idea where the ball was. Didn't get a whole lot of help. And I'm surprised Bufkin is only standing on second base. I thought he had the opportunity to maybe get to third, but... Maybe playing a little cautiously now. Coach Combs was up and yelling and pointing to, to Moss where the ball was. Moss didn't take his mask off either. Didn't, didn't think it didn't got as far away. So now here's the 1-0 to Caleb Jordan, today's starting pitcher. That one misses low and inside. 
but does stay in front of the backstop uh, for <laughs> ball two. Damn. Here comes the 2 -oh. This one a strike right down the heart of the plate to Jordan. Now the count, two balls, one strike. And even when Hammond's fallen behind a little bit, and he hasn't done that much, he was able to come back in with the strike and bring things even. Now the 2-1 to bunt attempt that goes fouled on the third baseline. A little bit of a, a late a square for Caleb Jordan as trying to move Buffkin over to third base. But no yeah. dice is now the count even at 2-2. Two -two. It's almost like he just changed his mind and pulled it back and the ball hit the bat anyway because that went along the path between the dirt path between the uh, Loris dugout and home plate. Now comes that 2-2 and a swing and a ball hit sharply into right field. That's going to get down and possibly score and run. Godholm has it. A wheeling around third base is Andrew Buffkin, and he's going to come for a play at the plate, and he is in standing up as the ball just about two steps too late. Moss covers it up, uh, standing at first base now with an RBI single is Caleb Jordan helping his own cause. And Loris gets their first run of the ball game. The score now 7-1 here in the bottom of inning number three. A sharply hit ball. Nice, nice throw in by uh, Connor Gotham and hit the cutoff. The throw is to the cutoff man uh, who let it go through. And it would have been a tough play to make as Buffkin was wheeling around third base, checking back over on Caleb Jordan at first base is Corey Hammond. But yeah, Gotholm did a very good job of getting over and getting that ball in out of right field, but just not quite quick enough on a ball hit relatively deep into right field on the ground. Now we have a pop fly to the left side of the infield. Looks like third baseman O'Reilly Hardaby coming in on it, and he's going to make the play, <laughs> reaching back in foul territory. Overran that one by about a step or two, but is able to haul it in in foul territory. And Gage Smith is retired on the first pitch. He sees a, a pop fly in foul territory and a great play by O'Reilly Hardaby. <laughs> Hardaby gave himself a, whoa, I almost blew that one. <laughs> So that one, a fly ball foul out to the third baseman for the second out of the inning. And now stepping up is Carson Granger. Oh, Jordan's going. He's got this base stolen. Yeah, Jordan on the way to second. And a high throw that will get into center field off the right arm of Aiden Moss, but staying at second base. A good job by Bryce Farrow backing that one up in center field. Well, yeah, great jump by Caleb Jordan. I'm not sure how Corey Hammond ever looked over. And a great jump yeah, he's, by the starting pitcher, Caleb he's, Jordan. He stole that one on Hammond. He saw Hammond was up paying real close attention because he did not have a big lead, but he was there before the baseball. The pitch to Granger was a ball, and here comes the 1-0 fouled off behind home plate. The count now even at 1-1. One one. So another runner now in scoring position is I'm looking to see if there was a, a courtesy run. Didn't see a courtesy runner come on. I don't, I don't think there was one. As again, Caleb Jordan, the, right now the pitcher on record for Loris. Coming back in was Gilpin at second base. Now we have a dribbler in front of the plate and a foul ball. That was a very late signal as it was a fair ball when Aiden Moss picked it up, but I do believe it hit the batter and home plate, but a late signal by our home plate umpire. It did. It bounced up. and eh, yeah, I, I thought it did. I thought I watched it all unfold as it was only about 15 feet in front of us, but just waited for a signal and didn't get one until Aiden Moss picked the baseball up. So now the 1-2 count to Carson Granger and a oh. swing and a miss held on to. There was a deflection at the plate, but a good job holding on by Aiden Moss for the strikeout. But Loris does get their first run of the game. The score is 7-1 as we head to the top of inning number four, Spring Mills ahead by six. The National Maritime Center primary mission is to credential all U.S. Mariners. We have approximately 250 employees here in Martinsburg, West Virginia. Most people aren't aware of the quality of life here in Berkeley County. We have a lot of employees that are from the area. We obviously have folks that have to do tours here. And it's kind of uh, you know, a little bit of a hidden secret of how nice the quality of life is here. It's the late nights. It's the early mornings. It's working in the sunshine and rain and snow. It's the dedication, the care, the hours of training that led to the winner's circle. It's our job, our passion, our lives. We are the horsemen.
Here for the top of inning number four, Spring Mills ahead 7-1. Loris getting their first run of the game in the bottom of inning number three. And, yeah, a new pitcher on the mound as uh, Caleb Jordan is now done looking for a number. Looks like number eight. So looking, Andrew Bufkin. Andrew Bufkin. So he moves from second. We'll see if it was a straight switch. Again, the number's hard to read on no, back of the jerseys. Six. So he's six now. Bufkin's staying at second base. So he's left-handed. And Bufkin's, Coming in now. Bufkin's right playing second base. Number six, right Landon Gerald will be the pitcher. So we believe just a straight, straight switch. I think that's what the coach just said. Um, again, trying to read those jerseys. The jersey number is difficult to read, especially through netting. Here is, yes, that does look like a six. There is a gap. So the pitcher now will be Landon Gerald. So Caleb Jordan's day done after three innings. He gives up seven runs, strikes out two, walked two, hit one batter, and gave up six hits. Again, we do not have the season stats of four the Loris Lions, so we can't give you the pitching totals, but you'll learn when we do how well he's throwing when we get into the top of inning number four. <laughs> yeah, we will. And only, only four of those runs that uh, we do get the confirmation is Landon Gerald. Only four of the runs Jordan gave up were earned because they those two errors in the uh, second inning or what Allowed Spring Mills to score three then. So Corey Hammond will get it started, the number two hitter and the pitcher for the Spring Mills Cardinals. Going to lead it off here in the top of inning number four. Spring Mills has scored at least one run in each of their previous three innings. It was one in the first, two in the third, or and two in the second as well. The umpire has got some sort of lineup question. He's over by the Spring Mills dugout. Just Looking down at his lineup card. It should be Corey Hammond leading it off this inning. The last out in the third was Bryce Farrow. Well, the umpire wouldn't keep that. It's got something to do with who's in, who's out. And talking oh, I to. I guess he's relaying information from. So unless they're. From the Loris dugout. Again, we will. Ever, as far as we know, the only change made was Landon Gerald on the mound. No noticeable changes in the infield. <laughs> the outfielders are too far away. And even the infielders trying to read those numbers in a, a dark night with dark numbers on the back of the jerseys could be interesting at best. So Gerald comes set. The first pitch to Corey Hammond, low and outside for ball one. Again, we are in the top of inning number four, Spring Mills. Hold the 7 1 advantage. Again, another pitcher for for Loris, who starts with the bases empty out of the stretch rather than the windup as the 1 0 away outside, getting to the backstop pass, Jacob Black for ball two. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is one of the Loris pitchers who hasn't thrown very much. Coach Smith said that in addition to the tournament, uh, it's either tomorrow or Thursday, they've got a regional game that they that they need to make up uh, before the sectionals. Their sectionals begin next week. Here comes the 2 -oh. That one a strike on the outside corner. 2-1 now the count to Corey Hammond. The sun completely down now. Moon up over left field as the light's taking full effect on what is another beautiful ballpark that we get to call a game at. Here's the 2-1 to Hammond as he fouls this one off behind home plate, hitting the netting and falling right in front of the backstop. They count now even at 2-2. And that was up and in and jammed him a little bit. Yeah, not sure that would have been a strike if he let that one go back and hit the mitt of Jacob Black. But regardless, did take a cut. Now the count even. Here comes that 2-2 pitch. This one a breaking ball is a way out in front. It was Corey Hammond. He lives to see another pitch. That breaking ball, a slow, arcing breaking ball that I think a Corey Hammond was licking his lips on. <laughs> I'm sure his eyes about as big as the moon right now in left field. Atlanta Gerald comes set now out of the stretch. Here comes that 2-2 again. Ooh. And a ball that misses on a, a pitch outside that Corey Hammond wanted to take a cut at, was able to restrain himself. 
And now the count runs full at 3-2. Three two the count to the number two hitter Corey Hammond. Here comes that three two a flare into the right side of the infield. Andrew Buffkin working over and hauling it in for out number one. So not a lot on as that ball came off the end of the bat of Corey Hammond and a weak a pop out on the right side of the infield to Andrew Buffkin for the first out of the inning. And he couldn't have made it easier for Buffkin than if he threw it to him. That was that was hit right at him and right up in the air. So now stepping to the plate will be the number three hitter, Tyler Gilpin. Gilpin grounded into a double play. Back in inning number two, the first pitch he sees low inside in the dirt for ball one. That was a little breaking ball that broke away from the plate. And broke about 18 inches. <laughs> right into the dirt, right at home plate. Here comes that 1-0 to Gilpin. That one low and outside this time. So Gilpin ahead, 2-0. Coming up in the fifth inning, we'll get into our This Day in Baseball history. And throughout the rest of the course of the game, we will again recap you on what's going on so far in the Mingo Bay Classic as we are in day two of these, this five-day tournament. The 2-0 misses outside for ball three. So Landon Gerald. Now has thrown 10 pitches and only a three. I think that four have been strikes. Here comes that 3 -0. That one misses low and away, so a walk on four pitches to got Tyler Gilpin as he jogs down to first base. And that was not close. Uh, not, not one pitch in that at-bat was anywhere close to being a borderline pitch. All those were pretty easy to take for Tyler Gilpin. Gerald looks like he's aiming. More than yeah. just throwing. Yeah, you just got to rear back and throw. When you aim at the high school levels, when you get in trouble, that's when you end up throwing a lot of pitches. He also looks like he's really young. I bet he's not more than a sophomore. It's not a big kid. Tyler Moreland steps in. The righty had an RBI double to drive in the first run of the game for Spring Mills, the lone run of the first inning. As the first pitch to Moreland, he drives to the right side of the infield. It's going to be a tough play for Buffkin as he gets to the ball but bobbles it in the glove. And Moreland will reach first base. Would have been a tough play to make as Buffkin was working more towards second base. As moving over to second will be Gilpin. That's that's an E4. Yeah, that's an E4 as he got to the ball. And I think his momentum just carrying him away from the ball and just couldn't. They carry him more towards first base, and he just couldn't quite bring it in before his body moved away from that baseball. So reaching on an E4 is Tyler Moreland. And that's a play for Pitcher like Gerald, they just got to make. Gerald's first pitch now to Evan Hurt, high and outside for ball one. So now standing at second is Tyler Gilpin. First base is Tyler Moreland. Gerald is not a hard thrower. Uh, moves the ball, moving the ball around. He's got a, he's got a breaking ball that, that uh, breaks wide, but not real sharply down. Here's that one out to Evan Hurt. He golfs down and gets one, avoiding the ball is at second base was Tyler Gilpin and uh, turning one but not able to turn two is Cole Stewart over to Andrew Buffkin so a fielder's choice to get Tyler Moreland at second base but reaching first safely is Evan Hurd on the uh, fielder's choice six to four. And Tyler Moreland helped break that double play up because he, he slid in a nice clean slide straight at the base uh, but prevented uh, Buffkin from making the pivot. That does move base. Gilpin up to third base and now runners at the corners with one down to make that two down here in the inning as the first pitch uh, to Aiden Moss way outside, hitting hard against the backstop. And like you said, sometimes hitting the concrete backstop is a blessing because that ball ricocheted hard right back to Jacob Black, who turned around and only taken about a step, holding the runner at third, Tyler Gilpin, from scoring. Hmm. Fortunately, Gilpin got a read on that. But uh, Meanwhile, Hurt was able to move up to second base. So now two runners in scoring position with two outs for Aiden Moss. Here comes that 1-0, and Moss fouls one behind home, played out of play. Moss was hit by a pitch back in inning number two and reached on a walk in inning number three. And you mentioned he's 0-for-0 uh, zero zero now, but has reached first without the luxury of a hit. But a 1,000 on base percentage for the game. Hey, I'm sure Coach Combs will take that. 
Here comes the 1-1 one -one from Gerald. This one low and inside and a great block drop into his knees. It was Jacob Black keeping that ball in front of him, uh, keeping Tyler Gilpin stranded at third base. Yeah. Gerald short topped his catcher. And I think you're you're extremely accurate when you say that Atlanta and Gerald is more trying to aim than just rear back and throw. As this one bounced right in front of home plate and coming in is Gilpin and we won't have a play at the plate as the ball gets by the pitcher covering coming back around third base. That'll be Evan Hurt and he will score on the play. So Hurt was moving up to third. It was Jacob Black throwing back to Landon Gerald who was covering. The ball gets away from Gerald so two runs will score on the wild pitch. And Gilpin made that possible. Gilpin, the the ball when the ball bounced, it didn't hit the concrete this time. Hit the net, and and died. Uh, so he had the catcher Stewart go back and get it, and he threw accurately to Gerald. But Gilpin didn't slide. Gilpin came in, standing up. Gerald was in front of home plate, and I think it blinded Gerald for the throw for just a second, so that bounced off his gloves, rolls in the infield and allowed Evan Hurt to come around and score. Nice piece of base runner. Yeah, it wasn't a wild throw at all, as here's the 3-1 to Aiden Moss, and Moss once again will reach without the courtesy of a hit. As he now stands on first base and will get his courtesy runner, who uh, Corey Leitner has been busy today, <laughs> scoring twice on the day as a courtesy runner, and now puts another runner on base here with two outs in the top. Of inning number four, the score now Spring Mills nine and Loris one. As yeah. We're getting close to possible mercy rule territory. The rule still five runs here in South Carolina as it is back home in the Eastern Panhandle. Aiden Schenzel steps up and he pops one to the left side of the infield. Moving in on it is the shortstop Cole Stewart. He hauls it in for out number three, but the damage is done on a wild pitch. With Aiden Moss at bat, it gets by the catcher, Jacob Black, who misses uh, Caleb Jordan on the throwback, and it allows not only Tyler Gilpin to score, but Evan Hurt to score coming all the way around from second. So Spring Mills gets a two in the inning. They now lead 9-1, to one, the bottom of the fourth, uh, coming up next with Spring Mills ahead by eight. The National Maritime Center primary mission is to credential all U.S. Mariners. We have approximately 250 employees here in Martinsburg, West Virginia. Most people aren't aware of the quality of life here in Berkeley County. We have a lot of employees that are from the area. We obviously have folks that have to do tours here. And it's kind of uh, you know, a little bit of a hidden secret of how nice the quality of life is here. It's the late nights. It's the early mornings. It's working in the sunshine and rain and snow. It's the dedication, the care, the hours of training that led to the winner's circle. It's our job, our passion, our lives. We are the horsemen. Effort and Matt Miller running the TV10 camera. Caleb Falero back in the talk radio WRNR slash TV10 studios as we are through uh, three and a half here in the going into the bottom of the fourth. Coming back out to pitch is a Corey Hammond, I believe. Yep. Or do we have a a change on the mound? No, I believe That's Corey it. Hammond still. Just making sure. Thought I may have saw a different, saw the two, but thought I may have seen a seven on the back, not a one. But that is a two-one. Corey Hammond is still on the mound, coming out for his fourth inning of work. They're doing something. Coach Canby's out there. Yeah, Coach Canby out. Talking to the umpire. So maybe a defensive change. Again, can't see numbers in the outfield, but the only one I can see is yeah, three standing at first base, Braden McDaniel. I believe yes, base. he's still at first base. Moreland's still at and short. Moreland's still at short. Looks like that's still standing at third is Riley Hardaby. That's still hard of me, yeah. At third, see everything looking unless there was a change in the outfield, which again we will attempt to bring you if there was a change. It may have just been a question scoring wise or something along those lines. 
Tanner Kennedy will step in. The lefty, his second up out on the day, a strikeout victim to end the first inning. Back to get the bottom of the first as he fouls one off on one of the metal posts that holds the screen up. A sound not nearly as loud as the one that fouled off in the game before us. <laughs> that one that was, was a bell a, ringer. Yes. So now Kennedy behind on the count 0-1. Here's the one pitch. That one roped into right field for a single as it gets by Tyler Gilpin and, and rounding first and coming back in on the single is Tanner Kennedy. Waited on that one and drove it hard into right field. Yeah, sharply hit line drive. Straight away right field. So Hammond's going to give up hits. Yeah, the third hit of the game now uh, for Loris. So again, through the first two innings, didn't have a base runner. So the third and fourth so far. Being good to them, as it looks like number 17. Running for Kennedy, so be Lance Keynes. Lance Keynes, and this will just be a pinch hit or a pinch run. Lance Keynes, the pinch runner. Because Kennedy out in left field. So this is a pinch runner now standing at first base. Tucker Reeves, the DH. The righty now steps in. Was a line-out victim into left field. A great play by Aiden Schenzel. And Back to start the second inning, or to start the bottom portion of yeah. the second inning. First at bat, uh, they had Moreland shaded way over towards third base. Another sharp hit ball, and that was going back towards the wall, looking up, and that will get hitting the wall, barely staying in the ballpark, moving up to third now from first is Lance Keynes, and I thought that ball had a chance to get out of here, hitting at the base of the wall right below the We Are Lions sign. Aiden Schenzel getting it in quickly, but in at second base with a stand-up double is Tucker Reeves, as he hit one sharply to left field in his first at-bat, and this one gets by Aiden Schenzel for a double. Now runners at second and third for Loris. Yeah, if I, if I was with you. I thought it had a chance to get out. The coach Smith said, before, I was talking to before the game, and uh, that while the dimensions seem short, he said the park plays deep, and I think that's what he meant. It just doesn't carry real well here at night. Well, when you told me the dimensions, again, 310 to left field, 315 to right field, as it looks like we will have another pinch runner. Another pinch runner. This one going to be number 13, Caleb, uh, Caleb Lund. Caleb Lund, now the pinch runner at second. And Lance Keynes, the pinch runner at third base, is Cole Stewart will step in. But again, the dimensions here, 310 to left field, 350 straight away, and then 315 to right. And those numbers seemed awful short to me because when we stepped up to the ballpark, I don't know if it's the trees that make it seem bigger beyond the outfield wall, but this seems like a pretty big ballpark. Especially center field. Center yes. field looks a long ways away. So three pitches so far this inning and some damage done for Loris, but Nothing on the scoreboard quite yet as with no outs, runners at a second and third as Cole Stewart steps in. And he ropes one into left field. Will that one get down? Shenzel waits on it. It's going to drop in front of him. One run will score. They'll try to make a play at third, but going into third safely is Caleb Lund, and the uh, second run will cross the plate on the RBI single from Cole Stewart. And Shenzel did a nice job decoying. Decoying Lund, making it look like he had a chance of the ball so that Lund had to hold up. Saved a run. An RBI single for Cole Stewart on the first pitch. He saw in the at-bat, Caleb Lund now up to third, and runners at the corners. Score now 9-2, to two, so still some, some room to, to climb back in, and plenty of time left as we are in the fourth inning as the first pitch to Jacob Black misses Apparently, high and away. Jacob Black, not the tallest in stature, so the strike zone comes a little bit smaller. Now heading the count, a 1-0. Now here's that 1-0 from Ham, and that one definitely outside for ball two. And Stewart over on first base is scampering off as if he want, wants to go. Trying to maybe draw a distraction yeah. for Aiden Moss as the 2-0 misses low and away in the dirt. The count now, three balls, no strikes to Jacob Black. So we had a single to start the inning from Tanner Kennedy. A double off the wall in left field for Tucker Reeves and Nicole Stewart, an RBI single. 
as that ball hits him on the 3-0, and Jacob Black will take first base on what was going to be a walk or a hit by pitch, even if he got out of the way. And now he'll have a mound visit to try to calm down Corey Hammond, who in this inning is coming a little unraveled. As now the bases are loaded and still no outs here in the bottom of inning number four. Take it one for the team with our 3 0 count. <laughs> yeah, you could very easily bail out of the way, and you're going down to first base regardless. The entire infield in. As again, the score 9 2, but another hit, and this game becomes really interesting if, if Buff can, can find a gap in the outfield. Yeah, Coach Keem's home stand with Hannon. Give him a breather, call him down. Back yeah. to the dugout. Hammond Trust your guy. Uh, playing very well up to this fourth That's inning. And Spring Mill still that seven-run advantage, so nothing to, I don't think, worry about yet. But this inning, again, could get away from Spring Mills very quickly. No outs as Andrew Buffkin steps in. The first pitch to him, high for ball one. Uh, Hammond suddenly is struggling with his control. He had one minor bout of... Of control problem, but only lasted for about half a hitter. Hitter and a half. Base is loaded. The 1 0 pitch to Buffkin. He fouls that one down the first base line. Out of play. There he goes. Again, started up high and then came down and away. The corner playing in. In the infield. The middle infield playing double play depth. Here comes that 1-1 one, one to Buffkin. That's a ground ball to the shortstop. Moreland up with it. The only play is going to be at first. Throws that one in the dirt. It gets by a Braden McDaniel. One run scores. Another run coming in. Moving up to third base. It will be Cole Stewart. And two runs cross the plate. And it's now 9-4. Spring Mills. So a three runs across here in the bottom of inning number four. Oh, it's going to go down as a slow roller that would have been a tough play for Moreland to make. But he spiked it at first. That's going to go down as an E6. Ground ball to shortstop is one or two things. It is an out or it is an error. Yep. That's why he put the guy at shortstop. Marlin's a good player. Jacob Black now at third base. Coming in to score was Caleb. And now a draw ball driven to right field off the bat of Connor Roth. That's going to drive in another run. A move Andrew Buffkin up to second base and an RBI single for Connor Roth. 9-5 to five now, Loris coming back in. It's still no outs here in the bottom of inning number four. Okay. And Buffkin got one RBI. The other eye scores on the error. So now runners at first and second. It is Buffkin at second. Coming in to score was Canes, Lund, uh, Stortz come in in this inning, and Blacks come in in this inning. And now Roth stands at first base as... Now hitting will be number 21, our pitcher. Number 20 or no, not our pitcher. Now hitting, pinch hitting is Damian McLeod. So Damian McLeod will hit in the number nine spot. As everybody makes their changes on the scorecard, McLeod hitting for Caleb Jordan. Four right. runs across here in the bottom of inning number four, nine, five. Now the Spring Mills advantage, and Morris was not going to go away without a fight. Now very much back in this ball game. And I think under high school rules, Gerald will be able to re-enter. Yes. So now McLeod stands in for the first pitch he sees. That's a strike on the outside corner. A big pitch for Corey Hammond to get ahead on a batter. Still yet to record an out here in the bottom of inning number four. So four runs have come across without getting an out for Spring Mills. Here comes the 0-1. A swing and a miss on the ball low and away by McLeod. Now Hammond just one strike away from getting a much-needed first out in the inning and not a whole lot of opportunities. There's a ground ball possibility to Tyler Moreland, even if that's not a throwing error. It may not have been an out at first base. 
Here comes the 0-2 and a swing and a miss. McLeod goes down on strikes and a, a big strikeout for Corey Hammond as a much needed out number one comes here in the bottom of inning number four. And we go back to the top of the order. It'll be Gage Smith uh, stepping to the plate. It looks like Coach Combs is going to stay with Hammond uh, for a while. I haven't seen him against anybody. And you'd like to see him up. try to work out of this. Hammond a competitor. As again, Smith now steps in at the top of the order and a big swing and a miss by Gage Smith for strike one. I thought I saw somebody throwing behind the dugout, but turns out to be about a six-year-old girl. Don't uh, think Coach Combs is going to go with her. Uh, Could be wrong. Now comes the 0-1. This one low and away in the dirt for ball one. It was a single by Tanner Kennedy, then a double by Tucker Reeves, a single for Cole Stewart. Getting hit by a pitch was Jacob Black, and he's six, getting Buffkin on base, and an RBI single for Roth. As a foul ball out of play, off the bat of Gage Smith. He needs a ground ball here. The count now 1-2 to Smith. Runner still on first and second, standing on second base is Buffkin. Connor Roth standing at first base. The first out of the inning was McLeod. He struck out. A pinch hitting for our pitcher. Now ball sharply to third base line. A fair ball touching a third base is Riley Hardaby over to first for the double play. A great play by Riley Hardaby at third base, touching the bag, getting Andrew Buffkin at third base. Then a sharp throw to Braden McDaniel at first to get the batter. Gage Smith and Spring Mills out of the inning, but a, a tough inning for Corey Hammond. A four come around to score. The score now 9-5 as Loris back in this ball game. We'll head to the top of inning number five when we come back. Again, it's Spring Mills 9, Loris 5. When you're hurting, we're here. When things are confusing, we're here. When you need answers, we're here. Brown Funeral Home. We've been caring for families like yours for generations, since 1880. Whether you want to plan ahead or you need us now, our families are precious to us, and so are yours. Brown Funeral Home. In Martinsburg, Inwood, and Charlestown, Ranson, we're here when you need us. Life can get in the way these days. We all know that. Work commitments, social commitments, volunteer commitments, family commitments. You put your heart into all of it. You've got enough to worry about already. Your roof shouldn't be one of those things. Everything should just work. But when your roof is in need of an upgrade, you shouldn't have to worry about that either. Modern Renovations, your four-state roofing solution. Reminding you that home is where the heart really is. New pitcher on the mound for Loris looking for a number as apparently Landon Gerald only going to go for one inning. So one inning for him. Two runs come across through 20 pitches. I believe that left one on base. Walk two. Didn't strike anybody out but also didn't allow a hit for Gerald as you can close the book on him. That's Cole. That's number two. That's Cole Stewart out on the mound. A shortstop I'm pretty sure. So Trot Effort, who's now a shortstop. As, yeah, that does look like a two out on the mound for Cole Stewart. See if the public address announcer announces defensive changes. When we come out now, it looks like there is still a two at shortstop. Well, what? Number eight. So, Andrew Bufkin. Lance Canes moving to second base. He was a pinch runner. So Lance Canes now at second base. And Andrew Buffkin now the third pitcher of the day. Okay, so we got Buffkin. So Andrew Buffkin again, the third pitcher of the day for the Lars Lions. He started the game at second base, and Lance Canes was a pinch runner in the last inning. He would come around to the score after the single from Tanner Kennedy. The RBI single from Cole Stewart scored him. He now plays second base and earned a spot in the field. Well, I think that's got to mean that Kennedy's. So. McDaniel leading it off. The lefty leading it off for Spring Mills. As Bufkin out of the windup with the bases empty, the first pitch to him, a swing and a miss. 
uh, to McDaniel. Down 0-1 now is Braden McDaniel. Out of the windup with the bases empty, something we haven't seen yet from Loris. Both pitchers prior to this, out of the stretch regardless. A breaking ball finishing inside, too far inside for ball one to Braden McDaniel. Yeah, not a lot of starters throw out of the stretch all the time, although there's more and more relievers seem to be thrown out of the stretch. Here comes the 1-1, one, one, this one low and away in the dirt for ball two. Braden McDaniel, a single back in the third inning. Reached on an air, but did drive in a run in inning number two. Oh, I see what happened. McLeod is out in left field. That's how this works. So Damian McLeod now at left field. He was the pinch hitter for Caleb Jordan. Well, actually for Gerald, who was or for Gerald, who was the yeah. pitcher, who was so hitting for he's seven Caleb Jordan. Fifth. All right, that works. Now Kane is four. No, fifth. Here comes the three-one. As the two-one missed away, and a foul ball back right to our right, hitting the screen. So the count now full to Braden McDaniel. And I do believe he helped him a little bit there. That was he up, did chase that one up a little bit. But that's that's that pitch that comes in. And Looks like a beach ball and just can't get your hands up. Now the full count to Braden McDaniel. Out of the windup here is Buffkin. This one misses low and away. And Braden McDaniel will jog down to first, earning himself a base on balls. And he's been on base all three times. First time in error. Base hit and now walk. A couple guys in this Spring Mills lineup have been on first base each time they've come to the plate. Very productive day at the plate for Spring Mills so far as we're in the top of inning number five. Riley yeah, of, course, of course, Buffkin's job here is to shut him down. Don't want, don't want to lose what they what they got back. Strike to Hardaby on the inside corner. Hardaby reached with a couple of hits in his first two at-bats, including a three RBI double in which he reached third on the throw. Back in inning number three that really we thought was uh, could be the the dagger that may kind of deflate Lars, but boy, did they come back with vengeance in the bottom of inning number four. Buffkin was a quick throw over to first base, but McDaniel was not straying far. Here comes the 0 1. This one inside. Did it get a piece of Hardaby? It did not. Got out of the way just enough. He was looking for a jersey hit, though. He was, and gestured towards the, uh, the dugout, which I'm sure there was a couple of teammates. With yelling wear it. Yeah. Again, a lot easier to yell that from the dugout than when you're standing in there having a baseball come at you. So now the 1-1 one, one pitch too hard to be. This one high and inside. He took a hardy cut at it, a swing and a miss. He's now behind on the count 1-2 and not sure what he saw in that one, but that pitch was clearly going high and inside. And, uh, he was trying to drive that one into right field. I know there's something about those high fastballs. Yeah, look like beach balls. Isn't that what you said earlier? I did. So now the 1-2 out of the stretch. Here comes Buffkin with the 1-2, a breaking ball. Fouled off into the dugout, hitting a couple players in that Spring Mills dugout down the first base line. Everybody to seems it. to be okay. <laughs> Looked like it nicked at least one or two guys, and it's way around there like a pinball. But staying alive is Riley Hardaby. Again, he'll get the 1-2. Here comes that one, two. And now ball hits sharply into right field. Coming in on to make the play is Connor Roth. Roth playing perfect depth, reading that ball perfectly. Jogs in and makes that catch, making it look very routine for out number one. Yeah, well hit, but right at him. So one down here in the top of inning number five. After that, a line out to right field. And we're back to the top of the order. It'll be Bryce Farrow stepping up to the plate. The righty reached on a fielder's choice in the second and walked to get the game going in the first inning. Would come around to score. Hit a fly ball to center field. Back in the third. On first base is Braden McDaniel. That's looking in for a sign is Bufkin. He gets what he wants. And now a time at the play taken by Bryce Farrow. And for a change, not late in the, yes. not late in the pitcher's motion. Definitely something we're going to remember about this tournament is the late time calls allowed. 
by home plate umpires. Here's that first pitch to Farrow. Wanted to offer at it. Let it go by, and a good choice. It misses high for ball one. And McDaniel's one of the few Spring Mills players, and a handful of them, who has not attempted a steal this year. And not a great lead over at first base, but Coach Combs has sent a few in this game today. Bryce Ferris sends the 1-0 into down. the gap in center field. That's going to get down, uh, stopping it in center field and going to second base. They will get no bobbling. Cole Stewart bobbling the ball at second base as they had dead to rights. Braden McDaniel, who had to freeze on the ball at the center field. Gage Smith coming in. Looked like that ball was going to drop. He dove to get it and had a chance at it, bobbled it in center field and sent it back in, almost getting a Braden McDaniel at second base, but a runner safe and a single for Bryce Farrow. Well, Smith did a nice little deke out there because he dove and did not make the catch, but then brought his glove up if he had, as if he had, so McDaniel started running back towards first until, he, until the, uh, they saw the ball had bounced behind him. So now runners at first and second up to bat now is uh, Corey Hammond. Takes first pitch. He sees low and away for ball one. One down here in the top of inning. Number five, it's Spring Mills ahead of Loris. Nine to two. That was a heads-up play by Smith doing that deke. I like that. Whole right side open again. And Buffkin comes set out of the stretch for that 1-0 in. And Corey Hammond ropes one down the third baseline. It does get out of play foul. Let's take a look at the fifth inning on this date in baseball history feature. We're looking at April 16th, and we're going to go to 1988. The Braves established a national league record for consecutive losses to start a season at 10 straight. So that was the record to start the season in the National League. It was 10 straight losses set by the Atlanta Braves in 1988 after a 7-4 loss to the L.A. Dodgers. Their first win would come the next day against the Dodgers when they got a 3-1 win. They would finish the season in 1988, 54-106. Hard to imagine just a few years later that would be the Braves of the 90s. Well, Maddox and Glavin grew up. Here comes the 1-1 to Hammond. He drives it into center field. That looks like That's it's going to drop in, and it will. Going to third base and holding will be Braden McDaniel. Everybody safe at their back as McDaniel has to hurry back to third base. He took a wide turn. But now Farrow will be at second. Braden McDaniel will be standing at third base and reaching on the a bloop single into center field is Corey Hammond. I think Coach Combs was thinking about Coach Byler. Yeah. He said, we're not making that play at the plate. Why don't you just hold up as we only have one out in the inning. And now the base is loaded for Tyler Gilpin. Although, in fairness to Coach Byler, they were, they were plays where perfect plays had to be made. They just made perfect plays on them. And for those who didn't catch any of the Martinsburg games the last two days, a couple of tough plays at the plate for Martinsburg as Buffkin steps off. But one ended the game yesterday and today thrown out at the plate in a 7-5 win for the Dogs. Corners up, middle at double play depth. The first pitch to Gilpin misses low in the dirt for ball one. A good block by Jacob Black. 9-5 in the top of inning, number five. Just one down, and the bases are juiced. Out of the windup will be Andrew Buffkin. He delivers on the 1-0. This one low in the dirt for ball two. Everybody getting a pretty hefty secondary lead, at least at second with Bryce Farrow and at first for Corey Hammond. Pretty standard secondary lead for Braden McDaniel at third, but everybody else wants to make sure they can at least have a chance to score on a ball hit into the outfield. Here comes the 2-0 to Gilpin. This one high and outside. Now the count 3-0 and nowhere to put Gilpin. So right now it's going to have to be Buffkin coming right after him. and Gilpin has to be patient here. Well, he's taking this pitch. Even if this one is a strike, I think you got to you got to wait for your pitch because a walk would be as good as a hit and would drive in or one would bring in a Braden McDaniel from third base. Here comes a 3-0. This one, a strike. A little late call. A little late call. It was up in the zone but did catch the top of the strike zone. Just waiting to see if they would call that a ball a little up. 
Home plate umpire did throw the sign out. The count now 3-1. Kilpin struck out 18 times this year, but Stewart is not an overpowering pitcher. The hitters count now 3-1. Kilpin rears back. It takes a hardy cut. This one oh, popped no. out and caught a basket-style catch by the catcher, Jacob Black. And our home plate umpire defers out to the field umpire. Had a better look at the ball as the home plate umpire was to the back of Jacob Black and Black uh, reacting very well and catching it uh, like a basket catch, catching it kind of like a punt. But it's an out nonetheless as a hearty cut taken by Tyler Gilpin. Yeah, he, he, he dove, gloves underneath, and rolled on, so he was on top of it, and then he rolled over to show he still had it. So may have been lost somewhere in transition, but nobody can prove that, so it is the second out of the inning. A great play by Jacob Black behind the plate. That brings up now Tyler Moreland with the bases loaded. Now two outs here in the top of inning number five. It's Spring Mills, the 9-5 advantage over Loris. And Moreland rips one. That's going to get in the left field past the third baseman, a Carson Granger. One run is in. The second run coming to the plate. It's going to be cut off by the pitcher, a Buffkin, and two runs are in. Scoring from third is Braden McDaniel, and coming around uh, from second base is Bryce Farrow. So two runs in is uh, moving up to second base. It was Corey Hammond and a two-RBI single for Tyler Moreland. Big hit by Moreland, getting back two of those. Getting back two of the runs that uh, Loris got in the bottom of the inning. Spring Mills now the 11-5 advantage. I keep and calling Buffkin Stewart. I'm stuck on him. <laughs> See that number two. <laughs> and that makes that inning the bottom of the fourth huge uh, for Loris because that would have been the 10-run mark for Spring Mills and would have left Loris down to their final three outs. But now a six-run advantage. Loris, again, still very much in this ballgame, especially if they can produce the way they did in the bottom of that fourth inning. Evan Hurt now. Up to the plate. Ready awaits the first pitch and takes a strike on the outside corner. So Fielder's choice getting him on the fourth and a single back in inning number three. Again, standing on first base is Tyler Moreland, Corey Hammond, and standing on second. Now comes the 0 1 and a golf swing that goes out of play off the bat of Evan Hurt. That one. A well below the knees. Went down to get this one as it bounced over the third base dugout and out of play. And Hurts the team leader and with doubles. He's got eight of them. He'd sure like to get his ninth here and bring in a couple more runs. Tyler Moreland now three RBI on the day. That puts him up to 20 on the season. Now here comes the 0-2 to Hurt. This one low away in the dirt. Good take by Hurt and a good block by Jacob Black. Keeping it in front of him, keeping the runners at first and second. They do not want them to move up into scoring position. That would not be ideal if you are the Lions. That comes the one two as Buffkin looks in. Here comes that one two. And again, golf into left oh. field. Will it get down? Making a play on it. A great play in center field by Gabe Smith. Running in and making that catch. Thought one thought that one was dying a lot quicker than it was, but Smith making a great play. The Spring Mills gets two here in the top of inning number five. They lead 11-5, to five, the bottom of the fifth. Coming up next, this is High School Baseball on Talk Radio, WRNR and TV10. If you hang the WVU Medicine sign, it certainly has helped take us to another level. Evolving what we try to do as physicians and as a health system and organization is the mission of WVU Medicine, and it's an exciting mission to be a part of. With the knowledge and the the years of practice that they've put into this institution, you know, they, they know a lot. They can help you, and they've helped me a lot. Having people treated locally uh, enhances their overall uh, care. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Two runs for Spring Mills in the top of inning number five as we head to the bottom of the fifth. And it's the Cardinals ahead of the host, Loris Lyons, 11 to five. We got us a new pitcher. A new pitcher on the mound. I can't quite see the number. There's a Looks seven. like a seven. So 
So just a, a straight number seven. Connor Gottholm, who was playing right field. So we'll see if it was a straight switch trying to look out to right field. Can't quite tell, but Connor Gottholm. That's not Hammond out there because nah. that's a left-hander. I was going to say, unless he switched hands, that is not Hammond. So we're going to see who could be out in right field. Could be Evan Stamball possibly. What we do know for a fact is that Connor Gottholm is on the mound and Corey Hammond's day is done. He goes four innings, gives up six hits of five runs, didn't walk anybody, did hit a batter, and struck out four. Again, we will attempt to figure out the defensive changes as, again, a new right fielder in for Spring Mills. As we'll see if he turns around. Tying his shoe now, hoping he turns around to a jog back out to his position. But knowing our luck, he'll backpedal. Again, having some trouble with that right shoe right now. Number five. Number five. That's Cameron will be Cameron Allen. Cameron Allen now in right field. Good looks, Mr. Gefford. First pitch to the first bat of the inning, Carson Granger. Misses for ball one. Here comes the 1-0-A. Swinging a foul ball into the first base. Dug out out of play. Count it one and one. So Cameron Allen in right field. Taking over for Connor Gottholm, who is now on the mound. Here comes that one, one, and a big swing oh, and a miss on a hardy breaking ball from Gottholm. That's a big sweep and swerve there. Now Granger behind in the count, 1-2, and a game that's moving pretty quick here at Lars. As again, it is pitch black now as the lights take full effect. Now the 1-2 from Gotthold. This one a oh. strikeout on the upper edge of the strike zone. Thought that one was right above the numbers, as I'm not sure that Granger agrees with that one, but he will have a seat for the first out of the inning on a strikeout looking. I'm relatively sure he doesn't agree. Yeah, I'd be pretty sure about that too, and I think I'm right there with him. Con, uh, Gotham has been in se pitched 17 innings so far this year. He's uh, got a record of one win and three losses. He's got no 17 innings. He's given up 25 hits, 22 runs, 17 of them earned. He's walked 14. Not a good number. Struck out 13. Uh, hasn't hit anybody. So here comes Gotthom. He will pitch the first pitch routine driven to the left ball. field. Routine fly ball, like you said, to Aiden Schenzel, who will bring it in off the bat of Tanner Kennedy. So Kennedy sees one pitch, drives it out to left field. Schenzel makes a good play on it for out number two of the inning. So five pitches now and two down. Five pitches total here in the bottom of the fifth. Four to Carson Granger and just one to Kennedy as Tucker Reeves now steps in. Gotthom wants to have a conversation with Aiden Moss. So Moss does oblige. Does oblige. Again, we want to remind you that tomorrow we will be back at Carolina Forest. For the third morning in a row, it'll be Martinsburg as they take on Jordan Elridge for a 10-15 first pitch. Our pregame will begin right at about 10.05. Oh, got to get up early tomorrow. <laughs> Reeves sets in, and a ball inside gets off the glove of Aiden Moss for ball one. And Moreland again is shading over towards third base like he did so a first at bat for, for Reeves. Big hole up the middle of the diamond right now, especially to the left of second base. High school version of the shift. Yeah, as you're not getting anything through the hole of third and short. Here comes the 1-0 in for strike one on the outside edge. Two Tucker Reeves, now the count even at 1-1. We'll talk about the rest of the games tomorrow coming up in the sixth inning as the 1-1 fouled back behind home plate hitting the screen. That looked like a little bit of a breaking ball. In that. At least a little bit off speed. Changing speeds up, got home. Can do that well. 
That's now the one, two. And a swing and a miss in the dirt. A throw is going to be had to made the first, and Braden McDaniel brings it in from Aiden Moss, and a strikeout and a throw down to first, a one, two, three inning for Connor Gottholm in his first inning of relief. And we will head to the top of inning number six. It's still Spring Mills ahead by six runs at 11 to five. Welcome to La Bella Vita, named for my grandma Vita. Our mountaintop getaway honors her legacy while complementing the home's spectacular views. This recently renovated property boasts a breathtaking landscape of Deep Creek Lake while providing great open interior spaces for a sensational vacation. You'll immediately notice the great room allows for entertaining, dining, and relaxing after long days on the lake or skiing on the slopes of Wisp. Your family and friends will enjoy relaxing in all the open spaces. The home features six bedrooms, including four that are private suites. And each of the four levels of this home feature amazing visibility as far as the eye can see. Like our family, we hope you enjoy making memories here on the mountain. We love sharing the spacious, warm, and inviting home that overlooks the lake. Cheers to the beautiful life, La Bella Vita. <laughs> 59 degrees as staff weatherman Matt Miller comes over and says it is 63 <laughs> back in the eastern panhandle. So if you're watching in Berkeley or Jefferson County or wherever you may be watching in the eastern panhandle, appreciate the warmth. Although, it, again, I, I'm still a firm believer that no matter how cold it is here, it's going to feel warmer. Uh, the 59 here feels warmer than a 59 feels at home just because you're, you're at the beach. We have us another new pitcher. Another new pitcher, the fourth this, this, one of the game. They're forcing me to go to the green pen. Don't often get to pull this one out. This is Keller Powers. What a name for a pitcher. Keller yep. Powers, who wears number 23. And who knows where he's hitting. So Keller Powers on the mound. So just one inning of work for Andrew Bufkin, who... Trying to see if he just went back to second base. I can't read his numbers. Yeah, having trouble reading the numbers again here in the dark. You know, Aiden Moss is coming to the plate. and To be fair, I think we'd have trouble reading the numbers in the light. Yes, I would agree with that, but Keller Powers is on the mound. The fourth pitcher of the day for Loris. Again, trying to keep everybody's pitch count down. As you mentioned, they have a regional game coming up this week. Number one is at second base, so make that Thomas Cox now at second base. But who knows where he's hitting. That is a problem for future us. So Cox at second base. Umpire's trying to figure it out <laughs> here, too. Keller Powers now on the mound. Yeah, okay. quite a few uh, scratches and... Coach, lines across infield positions on my score sheet. And Coach Camby was out trying to, to get the lineup straight. Yeah, who's on first? Yes. What's the guy's name on second base? Yeah. Yeah. We do know it's the top of inning number six, and Spring Mills has the 11-5 to lead. And Keller Powers now on the mound. The first pitch to Aiden Moss, low and away for ball one. For Andrew Bufkin, he went one inning, gave up two runs on three hits, one walk, no strikeouts through 26 pitches. As here comes the 1-0 to Moss. This one a strike on the outside corner. Pretty similar location. But that one does catch the edge of the zone. The count even out, one apiece. Infield playing normal depth along with the outfield. Here's that 1-1. One, one. That inside, as you hear, wear it from the Spring Mills bench. And a couple, again, of, he's, couple he's, of the fans, I yes, think. Probably. Easy to say when you're not the one standing in there on a relatively chilly night. Probably that baseball except. stings a little bit. Aiden Moss grounds this one to the left side of the infield. Cole Stewart now with it. He'll fire over to first for the first out of the inning. Fires it to Reagan Granger for out number one. I suspect that every, most of the people in the uh, stands were yelling at too. I think the only one not yelling was Aiden Moss's mother. Yes. Stepping up now will be Aiden Schenzel. 
to the second Aiden in a row. Schenzel steps in. A strikeout victim back in the third. Did reach on an error in the second. First pitch he sees is a strike at the knees. On deck will be Braden McDaniel. As the uh, one from Powers. That one a strike on the outside edge. Umpire likes down and away. Does like down and away. It's been pretty consistent. As long as it's consistent, yep. I'm okay with it. And something we didn't have this morning, but he's been pretty consistent as the 0-2 bounce right oh. back up the middle. Powers makes a great play, catches it kind of in his midsection, and is able to take a few steps over to first and toss it to Reagan Granger for out number two. That's a tough play to make and a good job by Powers. Yeah, that was a look what I found play. And yep. There's kind of a – Big guy is power standing on the mound. Just reflex. And, yeah, that ball came right back at him when he was done his follow-through. And, again, don't know if it necessarily hit his glove, but he just kind of cradled it as it hit him uh, in the belt area. He looked startled when he found it yep. in his glove. And took a few steps over and fired it to first for out number two. Braden McDaniel takes strike one. And at he, the knees in a little bit away, but he's still the definitely low and away. Down and away from people here. Good location if you can live there. Here comes the 0-1. This one too far outside for ball one. Braden McDaniel, a walk back in the fifth. He would come around to score. A single back in the third would come around to score. Reached on an air, driving a run in in the second, and would come around to score. The 1-1 low and away for ball two. So Braden McDaniel has reached all three plate appearances he's had and come around to score in all three as well. The only one on this Spring Mills roster that can say that today. Here comes that 2-1 as McDaniel chases one out of the zone and fouls it off uh, to the left, hitting the screen behind home plate for strike two. That one would have been high and outside for for ball three. I believe you're right. So now the 2-2 two -two pitch, two outs here in the top of inning. Number six, Powers sends the 2-2. Two -two. This one a foul down the third base line and out of play. Off the bat of Braden McDaniel. He stays alive at 2-2. Two -two. little bouncer, but Coach Coombs unable to make the play down there. He was a third baseman. He was a pretty good third baseman when he played. Keller Powers now out of the stretch. Here's that 2-2, two -two and a breaking ball ends up low and inside for ball three, and the count now runs full to Braden McDaniel. McDaniel, a good at bat so far. This will be pitch number seven of this at bat. And here comes the seventh ball pitch. Four. That one loan away, ball four. And McDaniel will reach base for the fourth time in this ball game. And I'm thinking Spring Mills hopes the streak continues. He's scored in each of the previous three. So seven pitches in that at bat. And well, here's Hardy. McDaniel standing on first base, and a guy that only had a 222 on base percentage coming into today's game. That's, That's going to skyrocket. It's gone up a bit. Riley Hardaby now standing in. Takes ball one high. Hardaby, a three RBI double back in the third, and a RBI single in the second. Was a line out victim in inning number five. As he awaits that 1-0. Off on second base is McDaniel and uh, fly to the left field. Is the left fielder going to get there? He will. Uh, Damian McLeod coming in on and making a good play on the run. As a hit and run was on and Powers goes through his first inning, giving up a walk, but gets out of it without giving up a run. We will head to the bottom of inning number six. Spring Mills is still ahead by six runs, 11-5. Rod Hawker here. You have no idea what Johnny's goes through to bring you the best seafood around. We have snow crab clusters, shrimp, crab meat, fish, all the best seafood you want at Johnny's. It's a tough job out here, but our customers are worth it. Johnny's with two great locations, 1456 Winchester Avenue, Marchburg, and Route 11 South in Chambersburg. The National Maritime Center primary mission is to credential all U.S. Mariners. We have approximately 250 employees here in Martinsburg, West Virginia. Most people aren't aware of the quality of life here in Berkeley County. We have a lot of employees that are from the area. We obviously have folks that have to do tours here. 
and it's kind of uh, you know, a little bit of a hidden secret of how nice the quality of life is here. Welcome back into Lion Park on the campus of Lars High School. Northwest of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, as we are here for the Mingo Bay Classic. It is almost wrapping up day two for us. Two more games tomorrow. Our first game will be Martinsburg taking on Jordan Elridge. Elbridge. Elbridge. Yeah. Okay. I so discovered Elbridge. that. Bridge. I was Googling them today and had to try several different spellings. The second game tomorrow will be the first time we get to see Hedgesville as the Eagles are set to take on St. James in what looks like it's going to be a very good matchup. The Martinsburg game at 10-15, Hedgesville at 5 p.m. First pitch here in the bottom of the sixth, way outside as we're back to the top. Or they make that the number five hitter in five. Cole Stewart. Yeah, that pitch was about halfway between the dugout and home plate. He just lost it. So Cole Stewart ahead in the count, 1-0. Count now even at 1-1, a, a strike at the knees. So Stewart had a RBI single back in the fourth, and he flied out to center field in inning number two. Here comes that 1-1 and a swing and a miss on a breaking ball. That started in the center of the plate and broke into the left-handed batter's box. That's a big old swerve. And Connor Gotholm now heading the count 1-2. Gotholm out of the windup here is the 1-2 and a breaking ball. A check swing. And are they calling a foul ball? A didn't see a signal, but Stort was heading down to first base as if he had swung and that was a pass third strike. Well, they're not. A, why are they appealing it? Yeah, so I'm guessing that's a, it's got to be a foul ball, unless they're saying he didn't swing. Well, they they two now two up on the board. Yeah, two two up on the board, and now a foul ball. So, I guess they're saying he held up. So two two the count is that ball fouled down the first baseline and out of play. Not very far, only about 15 feet up the line. I didn't see him request an appeal on that. Did I you? didn't either. And the, again, the way Stork came out of the box, he was acting like he went around and that was a drop third strike. Yeah. Either way, down the count 2-2 two, two to Stork. The 2-2 two, two low in the dirt. The count now full at 3-2. Bottom thing, number six, it's Spring Mills 11. And Loris 5. Today in... EPAC action. It was Martinsburg beating West Hill 7 to 5. Hedgesville fell to River Bluff 8 to 1. Jefferson got a win against Lakewood 15 to 5. And Washington still looking for their first win. They fell 17 0 against Worcester as the 3 2 misses outside. So Cole Stewart reaches on a walk. Again, on a questionable on ball number two that we thought was either fouled or a strike three. But now Cole Stewart standing on first base as catcher Jacob Black now steps in. Well, Gotham works up, walks almost a guy in innings. So that's not surprising. Here comes the first pitch to Black. That one, a ground ball to the shortstop. It's hard to be going to second. Now trying to turn two, double clutching at second base was Tyler Gilpin. They were never going to get Black at first base. The lead runner is out on the fielder's choice. It was Riley Harderby going to Tyler Gilpin at second. Uh, Gilpin double clutch that baseball a little bit and safe at first is Jacob Black. Nice play by Harderby, exactly the right play. Get the lead runner down, keep definitely, him out of scoring position, definitely, get the sure out. Definitely the most important. So the fielder's choice going to go to five to four for the first out of the inning. Now standing at oh, first base quick is... Quick throw over because <laughs> he was standing off first base and not paying much attention, but back in time. Now standing at first base is number eight, or standing at the plate, rather, number eight, Andrew Bufkin. First pitch, Bufkin high, a check throw back down to first, trying to throw behind the runner. Back in there, save at first is Jacob Black. And tried to get him with the pickoff. That's a danger for the before the at bat, and then tried to throw behind after the first pitch. Got home now. Come set. 
The 1-0, a strike on the outside corner. Count now even a 1-1. Gotham seems to be keeping the ball away from the hitters here mostly. And got home so far doing a very good job with his location. And keeping it on the outer edge and trying to keep it away as much as possible. That breaking ball low and in the dirt for ball two. Yeah, that's some nice downward movement to it. And good rotation, just couldn't get the height he needed. We're going to talk spin rates here in a minute? <laughs> <laughs> we certainly can. I think you'll have a little bit more knowledge about that than than I will, but I'm open to anything. It means how fast it goes. No, I understand. Told, I understand I've, that. But, but I've told you everything I know about spin Okay. Rates, so. Here comes the 2-1. Nice a pitch. strike on the outside edge again. A good job by Connor Gotholm working that outer edge of the strike zone. A tough uh, play for anybody at the plate to make. Yeah, the can. best they can do is wait on it and try to drive it out to the opposite field, but still a tough play to make at this high school level. So now the 2-2 two -two to Bufkin. Here's the 2 to a great stop. Going for second is Jacob Black. A throw down, and he is out at second base. A great throw by Aiden Moss, who made a backhanded stab at home plate. And I think Jacob Black assumed that ball was going to the backstop. What? They called him safe. Safe at second. I thought he slid into the glove. It certainly did look like it from our angle. Because you're right, that was a great throw. So Jacob Black now standing at second on a stolen base. As the 3 2, a swing and a miss to Andrew Bufkin, and he goes down on strikes. Yeah, it certainly did look like Jacob Black slid right into the glove of Tyler Moreland. But they're not jumping and yipping, so something no, must yeah. have happened. Um, maybe Moreland bobbled the ball, and or the ball came out. Or he could have got a hand in around. Now they're going to put in a courtesy, courtesy runner for runner. the catcher. And I can't read the number. Yeah, try. It's a single-digit number. It could be an eight. It could be a. Can't be an eight. And that's what it looked like to me. Yeah, it certainly did look like an eight, but make that a five. So Alan Ayala, the courtesy runner. The sharp eye of the camera here. The camera does help. First pitch to Connor Roth. Blown away in the dirt for ball one. Nice scoop by Aiden Moss, doing, getting a short hop there. One of the count to Connor Roth, who had a single, an RBI single in the fourth inning, and lined out to center field. Back in the third, here's the 1-0. That's a strike on the outer edge again. Godholm is living. When it's when it's been a strike, for the most part, it's been on that outer third. Doing kind of, a very good job of painting the corners. And a lot of them on that little sweeping slurve he's got. The 1-1, one, one, blown in the dirt. Catching on the quick hop was Aiden Moss. And a good job of keeping it in front of him, keeping Ayala at second base, keeping him from moving up. Moss has, seems to have quick hands. Yeah, a very good catcher behind the plate. Here comes a 2-1, a breaking oh. ball that totally fooled a Connor Roth, totally off balance, was not expecting that pitch at all. Uh, and gave me a kind of half-hearted... Uh, Excuse me, swing as he just realized I was going to be in the strike zone at the last minute. That was the a count now even at 2-2. That was a classic flail. Got him. And a strike three looking on the outside corner. And got home, is living in that location. So a walk to start the inning, a fielder's choice, and then back-to-back -back strikeouts to end the sixth inning. And we will go to the seventh with Spring Mills leading 11-5. for what's next or to plan ahead. We're here. Brown Funeral Home, a legacy of service since 1880. Life can get in the way these days. We all know that. Work commitments, social commitments, volunteer commitments, family commitments. You put your heart into all of it. You've got enough to worry about already. Your roof shouldn't be one of those things. Everything should just work. But when your roof is in need of an upgrade, you shouldn't have to worry about that either. Modern Renovations, your four-state roofing solution. Reminding you that home is where the heart really is. A 
a pitching change again. This looks like it is Cole Stewart on the mound. Still Cole Stewart. Yep. I had the same reaction though. It was uh, it was Powers on the mound to uh, finish the sixth inning, and that'll be Cole Stewart, the fifth pitcher we have seen today. So Powers going to go one inning, no hits, but no strikeouts, a one walk, and again the fifth pitcher we will see is Stewart, who was playing shortstop, and Buffkin believed to be back at shortstop or moving uh, to shortstop. So confirmation, Cole Stewart is on the mound. Wait and see. And yeah, did not get a defensive change announcement. As we are back to the top of the order, Bryce Farrow here to get this seventh inning started. Spring Mills, the 11 to 5 advantage in a game that started red hot for Spring Mills and really has been red hot at the plate for the entire game. The first inning without a run was the sixth. So Bryce Farrow now to start the seventh. Fouls off the first pitch behind the plate. He's now down 0 1. That was a healthy hack. So again, Cole Stewart on the mound. We believe it is Andrew Bufkin at shortstop. Here comes the 0-1 to Farrow, high and inside, ball one. Yeah, Stewart is a hard thrower we've seen today. Count 1-1 one, one on Bryce Farrow, the leadoff hitter. Walked in the first inning, reached on a fielder's choice in the second, and had a single two innings ago in the fifth. Here's the 1-1 one, one, high and inside, ball two. It looks like he's throwing with considerable effort, too. Yes, definitely reaching back and trying to find some zip on that fastball. Here comes the 2-1 as that's flared right back to the pitcher. A ball that had very little juice behind it. A hardy cut for Bryce Farrow just went off the end of the bat and right back to the pitcher. Had a funny little spin to it. It almost, almost looked like the one of the uh, flaps on the ball had come loose. And so Cole Stewart didn't have to move out of his follow-through position to make that one. Just put the glove up and caught it. That's now to bat as Corey Hammond, the first pitch to Hammond. Outside for ball one. This is this is not Hammond. This is Allen, I think. Correct. So make that Cameron Allen now stepping in. Cameron Allen a swing and a miss at a high fastball for strike one. Cameron Allen, number five. Allen, a left-hander. Hitting two, 208 coming in. He's got a double, four RBIs. Loris down to their final three outs when they get to the bottom of the seventh. They'll need six to keep playing. Again, it's Spring Mills, the 11 to five advantage. That's Cameron Allen that takes strike two. That pitch on the outside corner. <laughs> Out of the stretch, here comes Cole Stewart. And here's a foul ball caught by Jacob Black behind the plate. So a deflected foul ball that is held onto behind the plate for the second out of the inning. It's a strikeout. I heard, I think it was Dave Valley on uh, MLB TV talking about the skill of catching uh, Number 10, Tyler uh, the foul tips. And he says there is no skill, it's just luck. Tyler Gilpin takes. The first pitch he sees extremely high. Never even touched the glove of Jacob Black. Went over the Black, our home plate umpire, and went right into the netting. A little bit to the right of us. So Gilpin ahead in the count, 1-0. Uh, Valley said the ball either goes straight in the glove or it doesn't. There's not enough time for anybody to react. Here comes the 1-0 from Cole Stewart. This one high and inside. Ball two. So Stewart, the fifth pitcher on record. And he's just coming out. Yeah, he's reaching back a whole lot of fastballs. As this one misses low and in the dirt. One bounced right before it. I got to home plate. So now 3-0 to Tyler Gilpin. And Gilpin has reached on a walk once in this game. Also grounded into a double play and 
popped out in foul territory uh, to the catcher, Black, who made a phenomenal play, kind of cradling the baseball. Back in any number five. Here's a 3-0. That one low and away, and a walk on four pitches for Tyler Gilpin, who now stands on first base. And the problem with the maximum effort like Stewart is trying to give is that it throws off your the mechanics and makes it harder to, to control the pitch. Yeah, when you when you miss, you miss bad. But when you get a fastball in the location you want, it's it's going to be very tough tough to hit. And the two the two best pitchers the last two generations, Maddox and Koufax, became great pitchers when they stopped throwing as hard as they could. Tyler Moreland off to bat now takes a ball one on a what looked like a breaking ball in the dirt. Definitely some. Off-speed action on that pitch wasn't quite the fastball we had been used to seeing uh, from I had a little break Cole Stewart. Yeah. May have been only the first or second uh, breaking ball we had seen since he took over here in the seventh. Here's the 1-0 fouled off by Tyler Moore on a ball he chased out of the strike zone, kind of helping out Stewart on the mound. Now the count even at 1-1. Yeah, it looked a little bit up and away. Moreland's a big, strong boy. Yes, he is, a guy that's... Hit the ball today very well. A RBI double and then a two RBI single. So three RBI on the day as he fouls off the 1-1. One, one. Again, another hardy cut at the plate. This one he just gets a piece of and fouls yeah, he, off behind home plate. He'd like that one back. Yes, that was a ball that I think missed its intended location. That was right down the heart of the plate. That was a, a wheelhouse pitch uh, for Tyler Moreland. So now the 1-2, two, two outs in the inning. And here comes the one-two from Stort. A delivery and a breaking ball that Amoral is going to send into right center. That's going to drop in for a base hit. And moving up to third base will be Tyler Gilpin. So a play at third, but Gilpin in there safe as well. Runners at the corner with two outs and a, a good piece of inside out hitting by Tyler Morrill and dropping one into a shallow center. That was a sharply hit ball, tailed on the line, tailed away from the center fielder. But because of where the right fielder was playing, he had no shot at it. Good throw into third base, though. Great throw and great base running by Tyler Gilpin, knowing two outs and going directly on contact and getting just 90 feet away from being a possible 12th run on the day for Spring Mills. He's looking to improve to 2-0 and down here in Myrtle Beach in the Mingo Bay Classic and looking for win number 13 on the season. And again, just three outs away from getting that once the bottom of the seventh hits, but the top of the seventh. Not quite over yet. A strike one to Evan Hurd on the inside corner. Hurd also a pretty good day today. He's come around to score twice and has had a couple of quality at-bats, including an eight-pitch at-bat in the first inning. And he's got one hit, too. Yep, was that single back in the third inning? He sends this one to shortstop coming up. That is uh, Buffkin. He's going to fire over to first. And now beating it out is Evan Hurd. It was a relatively routine ground ball to shortstop, and Buffkin just waited on it, didn't charge the baseball, didn't really attack it at all, and waited for it to come to him. And Hurt realized that and the hustle down to first base, so that's going to be an RBI to Hurt. That's an RBI I think of it. He did. He waited on it. But it, in fairness to Buff, one, he's playing a different position than he started out in the game. I suspect that's not his regular position. But the other thing is those were a couple of big hops. Yes. Tough to judge those hops if you're not used to that position. So now Aiden Moss takes a hardy cut at the first pitch he sees for strike one. And a coming around to score, score was Tyler Gilpin. So there is that 12th run of the game for Spring Mills. They now lead 12-5, to five, a seven-run advantage here in the top of inning number seven. Runners at first and second. Here is the 0-1. This one drove down the first baseline but will go foul. So Aiden Moss now behind in the count 0-2. And Moss trying to go to right field there to take advantage of the big gap with the second baseman. Uh, trying to hold uh, number 13 out there. Who's number 13? Oh, try Moreland. Trying to hold Moreland out there by standing on top of second base. Oh. And a hardy cut on a fastball well out of the zone. Aiden Moss bails out. Uh, Cole Stewart on the mound, and the inning comes to a close. One run, does cross for Spring Mills. We'll head to the bottom of the seventh inning, and it's going to be Loris needing seven to keep playing. Spring Mills has 12. Loris five. The bottom of the seventh coming up next.
to prepare for what's next or to plan ahead. We're here. Brown Funeral Home, a legacy of service since 1880. Life can get in the way these days. We all know that. Work commitments, social commitments, volunteer commitments, family commitments. You put your heart into all of it. You've got enough to worry about already. Your roof shouldn't be one of those things. Everything should just work. But when your roof is in need of an upgrade, you shouldn't have to worry about that either. Modern Renovations, your four-state roofing solution. Reminding you that home is where the heart really is. Coming up as we speak, it'll be Loris needing seven to keep playing in this one. 12 to five is the Spring Mills advantage. Spring Mills yesterday had a pretty good offensive day as well. They were able to get 13 yesterday, so over two days. That's a pretty good run total. Yeah, it is. Uh, the thing I like about Spring Mills today is they got up the early lead, but they kept pressing. Yep. Kept, was, put, kept putting runs across. Yeah, it was really only the fourth inning that uh, made this a competitive game for a little while, that four-run bottom of the fourth inning for Loris. Other than that, it really has been Spring Mills the entire way. Yeah, Hammond, pit, Hammond pitched really well. Just seemed to run out of gas. In that, in that fourth inning and started leaving the ball up in the middle of the plate. And Damian McLeod will get it started here, the number nine hitter in the order. And it'll be Connor Gotholm trying to close it out. The first pitch to McLeod, low and away for ball one. So McLeod's second at bat, right? Didn't strike out the last time? Uh, yes, it was a strikeout as the 1-0 misses 2-0 as they strike out back in the fourth inning. Got home, working quick on the 2-0. This one right down the middle for strike one. Corey Hammond went four innings and since then, since then it has been Connor Got home. This one a fly ball to the right side of the infield. It looks like Got home coming over. He will make the play standing about two steps inside foul territory, about 45 feet down the line for the first out of the inning on the 2-1 pitch. McLeod went down and golfed at that, and it, he just golfed it up the elevator shaft. So one down, only two more outs to play with. If you're Loris, and we're back to the top of the inning, it's Gage Smith. And Smith yet to reach other than a fielder's choice. First pitch to him, high and away. Keeping that first guy in the inning off the bases it's real, it really helps cut down on the opportunities to have a big inning. And we've seen that twice now in the fourth and fifth inning as the 1-0, a strike on the outside third, but where else for Connor Gotholm? He's been living there this entire game, or in his entire relief appearance in this game. Oh, a nice breaking ball, ball, a hearty breaking ball that started coming right at Gage Smith and broke right over the heart of the plate. And all Smith can do is step out and admire that pitch. What a breaking ball. Here comes the one-two from Godholm. This one low and away for ball two. He's been pretty effective with that curveball that starts inside, breaks over the heart of the plate, and then he has that little slurve thing that he throws that's down and away. Two-two pitch oh, that. now is... Smith sends it to Tyler Moreland, a shortstop. Moreland up with it. Double clutches, fires over to first with that strong arm. Gets it over to Braden McDaniel for the second out of the inning. Was a little worried, worried when Moreland double clutched that one, maybe even triple clutched that one, but the strong right arm of Tyler Moreland sends it over to first base for the 6-3, out number two. And Gage was Gage started out of the box hard and then pulled up a little bit. Yeah. He, was, he limped the rest of the way down to first base and limped back to the dugout. Again, a little bit of a, cool, a, little bit. a cooler night as it is cooler here than it is back home in the Eastern Panhandle. A foul ball back behind home plate, hitting the net off the bat of Carson Granger, who is the a last hope right now for Loris. And Gotham feels it here. And got home working very quickly. Another oh, breaking nice ball, pitch. phenomenal. A breaking pitch again, the very same. We saw it at Gage Smith starting 
coming right at the batter and breaking over the heart of the plate. And got home working quickly. He wants to get it out of this one. Here's the 0-2 of breaking ball. That working down the line, stabbed at third by Riley Hardaby. Over to first base. A Braden McDaniel brings it in, and that will do it. The third out of the inning, and that will be the ball game. Your final in this one. It's Spring Mills 12 and Loris 5. We will head into the post-game show brought to you by the final score. When we come back, break down the numbers and break down the scoring in this one and set you up for our broadcast tomorrow. Again, the post-game show coming up next. But again, our final from this one, it is Spring Mills 12 and Loris 5. If you hang the WVU Medicine sign, it certainly has helped take us to another level. He literally, literally saved my life. It's just mind-boggling to me that he was able to do what he did. We're able to affect much more of a difference for our patients with these resources. Having people treated locally uh, enhances their overall care. They treat you great and they're down to earth in the West Virginia way that all West Virginians treat each other. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Welcome to La Bella Vita, named for my grandma Vita. Our mountaintop getaway honors her legacy while complementing the home's spectacular views. This recently renovated property boasts a breathtaking landscape of Deep Creek Lake while providing great open interior spaces for a sensational vacation. You'll immediately notice the great room allows for entertaining, dining, and relaxing after long days on the lake or skiing on the slopes of Wisp. Your family and friends will enjoy relaxing in all the open spaces. The home features six bedrooms, including four that are private suites. And each of the four levels of this home feature amazing visibility as far as the eye can see. Like our family, we hope you enjoy making memories here on the mountain. We love sharing the spacious, warm, and inviting home that overlooks the lake. Cheers. Well, it was a good one for Spring Mills. It makes them 2-0 here at the Mingo Bay Classic, a 12-5 win over the host, Loris Lions. Spring Mills getting a 13-3 win over Hastings yesterday. Hastings, rather, yesterday. So 2-0 on the series now as they will tomorrow get ready to play Penfield in a 245 of first pitch. Uh, let's get it started with the scoring summary. It was Spring Mills in the first inning uh, getting the scoring started. Bryce Farrow coming around to score on a RBI double from Tyler Moreland. Then in the second inning getting three runs, a lot on some airs. Also a single from Riley Hardaby, Braden McDaniels, McDaniel as well. So three runs scoring in the third inning, also an RBI single from Corey Hammond. It was three in the top of the third as well as a three RBI double from Riley Hardaby. And then one in the bottom of the third inning for Loris, their first run of the game, an RBI single for Caleb Jordan. Going to the fourth inning, it was two runs for Spring Mills. Uh, those coming on a couple of walks. A couple of fielders' choices and scoring two on a wild pitch that really brought those runs around. Scoring from second was Gilpin, and scoring from third, or scoring from third was Gilpin, scoring from second was Evan Hurt. But a couple of walks and errors putting those guys on. It was a wild pitch bringing both of them around. In the bottom of the fourth, it was the biggest inning for Loris. They scored four, and a lot of that coming on a very hot bat start in that fourth inning. It was a single, a double, a RBI single, a hit by pitch. Reaching on an air was Andrew Bufkin, and then an RBI single for Connor Roth. That was an awful lot of action early in that inning. And that would bring four around. Then it would be uh, Corey Hammond getting out of the inning, giving up four, and we thought it was going to be real interesting at that point. Those would be the last runs of the game for Laura. Spring Mills would add two in the top of the uh, fifth inning. That would be the way that they kind of reset the tone in a way, if you will. Adding two was a 
It looks like a two RBI single. Yep, a two RBI single from a Tyler Moreland. And they would add one more in the seventh inning. A RBI single from Evan Hurt. That gets you to our final, a 12-5. to Gary, what would you think? Well, here's the difference in the ball game. I've, Springville hit the ball, but they got eight free bases. Seven walks and hit batter, and I'm just looking in here, and I think there is exactly there is only one inning in which Spring Mills got a walk when they didn't score. And then you look at what the Spring Mills pitchers did; they gave up two freebies. Hammond hit a guy, and Gotham walked a guy, and that was it. And if you keep people off the bases, make them hit the baseball, good things are going to happen to you. Absolutely. Spring Mills executed, and they uh, did what they needed to do with runners in scoring position. They did what they needed to do when given the opportunities. And in the game of baseball, if you take advantage of opportunities that are given to you, you're going to win an awful lot of ball games. And uh, when you're doing it down here, it's a different environment. So you're you're making a staple and not only representing uh, your school, but also the area you come from, the state you come from. So Spring Mills doing a lot more than just representing Spring Mills High School Baseball. They're showing that, hey, West Virginia baseball is pretty good when you're playing a team uh, down here in South Carolina. Well, you are in the post-game show brought to you by the final score with plenty of screens to watch the game pool tables, trivia nights, and great food and drink selections. Meet your friends at the final score at 1517 Winchester Avenue, just south of Martinsburg. We need to get in our final break. When we come back, we'll take a look at some of the stats from this game and also set you up for our two broadcasts coming up tomorrow. This is the final score post-game show. Again, the final here from Loris. It was Spring Mills 12, Loris 5. Ron Hawker here. You have no idea what Johnny's goes through to bring you the best seafood around. We have snow crab clusters, shrimp, crab meat, fish, all the best seafood you want at Johnny's. It's a tough job out here, but our customers are worth it. Johnny's with two great locations, 1456 Winchester Avenue, Marchburg, and Route 11 South in Chambersburg. The National Maritime Center primary mission is to credential all U.S. mariners. We have approximately 250 employees here in Martinsburg, West Virginia. Most people aren't aware of the quality of life here in Berkeley County. We have a lot of employees that are from the area. We obviously have folks that have to do tours here. And it's kind of uh, you know, a little bit of a hidden secret of how nice the quality of life is here. Welcome back into the post-game show brought to you by the final score. It's time to take a look at some post-game stats brought to you by Dynamark Atlantic Security. Hey, don't become a statistic. Protect your family and home with the local alarm professionals at Dynamark Atlantic Security. They have the solutions to meet your needs and local monitoring, too. To learn more, call Ben Copenhaver at 304-671-2158. Starting with the Spring Mills Cardinals, we have 12 runs on 11 hits, a one air, and 10 runners left on base. And for Loris, we have five runs on six hits. They had three airs in the field and left four runners on base. So not nearly the amount that Spring Mills did, but they couldn't I get a lot of those four runs across either. Those four uh, runners on base, hard to come by. Uh, some individual stats. Let's start with Spring Mills. On the mound for Spring Mills starting the game was Corey Hammond. He went four innings, gave up uh, six hits, five runs, struck out four, and hit one batter. Connor Gotholm came in. He went three innings, uh, no hits allowed, no runs, uh, four strikeouts, and one walk hitting for Spring Mills. It was a slew. I mean, you can go down the entire list in a very good day at the plate, not only getting hits but getting on base. I think some of the, the big numbers, you look down, and a great day at the bottom of the lineup for the eight and nine hitters, including uh, Braden McDaniel, who got on four different times and scored uh, three of those four, including an RBI uh, ground out that he did reach on an air but drove in one of the three in the second inning, a single that he would come around to score on in the third inning, and a walk he would come around to score on in the fifth, would also reach on a walk in the sixth. Uh, Bryce Fair leading it off had a walk. He also had a single. Uh, Corey Hammond added two hits uh, going down the line, a walk for Tyler Gilpin, a RBI double for Tyler Moreland, along with a two RBI single and a single in the seventh, so he finished uh, three of five on the day. A 
two hit event for Evan Hurt. He also had a RBI in there, so he went two for five. And a couple of on-base appearances for Aiden Moss. He was hit by a pitch, walked twice, and also struck out and grounded out. Aiden Schenzel uh, did not reach without an air, did reach on an air back in inning number two. And, again, we mentioned those eight and nine hitters. So, again, that uh, brings you to the uh, stats for Spring Mills. Again, they finish uh, with uh, 12 runs on 11 hits, uh, one air, and 10 left on. When it comes to the home Loris Lions. Uh, Pitching-wise, uh, there was a slew of pitchers. It started with Caleb Jordan. He went three innings, gave up six hits, seven runs, uh, two strikeouts, walked two, and hit a batter. Uh, Landon Gerald went one inning, didn't allow a hit, allowed two runs, and walked two with no strikeouts. Andrew Bufkin went one inning, gave up three hits, two runs, and walked one with no strikeouts. It was Keller Powers. That went one inning. No hits, no runs, did walk one and no strikeouts. And then Cole Stewart finished it out. He went one inning as well, allowed two hits and one run, struck out two, and walked one. Again, only six hits uh, for Loris, and a lot of those coming in inning number four was a single for uh, Tanner Kennedy, a double uh, for Tucker Reeves, a single for Cole Stewart, a single for uh, Connor Roth. So that was, I mean, you look at that, and that's four of the six right there. Other than that, it was a uh, a single uh, by a Caleb Jordan in inning number three, and just uh, not a whole lot doing other than that uh, for uh, this uh, Loris Lions team. So that is the stats that bring you two of five runs on six hits, of three airs, and four left on. Those are your postgame stats brought to you by Dynamark Atlantic Security. Hey, don't become a statistic. Protect your family and home with the local alarm professionals at Dynamark Atlantic Security. They have the solutions to meet your needs and local monitoring, too. To learn more, call Ben Copenhaver at 304-671-2158. All right, Gary Geffert, your final thoughts on today's game. Connor Gold got home. Did just a heck of a job. Pitched those three innings, faced only ten hitters, and shut down uh, Loris after they had come. They looked like they were coming back, and he shut them down. And the other shout-out, I think, goes to the defense uh, for Spring Mills. They played an excellent defensive game and bailed Corey Hammond out in his last inning uh, with a round the horn with a 5-3 double play. Um, nice place by Har- uh Hortley to, to step on third base, threw it across the diamond, and that got them out of a heck of a jam on that, and then got home, came in, and shut them down. Good pitching, good defense. Again, we're going to wrap up the post-game show brought to you by the final score with plenty of screens to watch the games, pool tables, trivia nights, and great food and drink selections. Meet your friends at the final score at 1517 Winchester Avenue, just south of Martinsburg. We will wrap it up by telling you what is coming up tomorrow. That is Wednesday, day three, the Mingo Bay Classic. It'll be our first game. It will be Martinsburg taking on Jordan Elbridge. That is at 10:15, about a 10:05 uh, first pitch, and then we will have Hedgesville at St. James tomorrow night's game. That'll be at five o'clock. Again, roughly five o'clock. We haven't had one start on time yet of uh, this tournament, so right around then. And it'll be Washington taking on a Newark at 10:15. Jefferson will take on Rock Hill at 245, and Spring Mills will take on Penfield also at 245. So, again, the final from today was a 12-5 win uh, for Spring Mills over Loris, and we will have Martinsburg and Hedgesville on the schedule for tomorrow. A big thanks to Cato Falera back at the studio. For Gary Geffert and Matt Miller running our TV10 camera, I am Matt Crawford saying until tomorrow, we will see you later. been listening to West Virginia High School Baseball. Today's game broadcast has been brought to you by Miller Honda, Cox Holiday Professionals CPAs, Brown Funeral Homes, Miller's Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, The Marius Group and Ameriprise Financial, WVU Medicine Berkeley and Jefferson Medical Centers, Parsons Ford, Bechtel Jewelers, WH Miller Systems, D and N Auto, The Mortgage Center, The Hagerstown Sons, Hosses Steak and Sea, Bears Repair, The Final Score, and Atlantic Security. 
For the continued excitement of high school, college, and Major League Baseball, keep it tuned to FM 106.5, AM 740, Comcast Cable Channel 10, and online, talkradio.wrnr.com. All rights reserved.